Ini Profesor Dr. Nur Islami. And the honorable keynote speakers from USA, Italy, Japan, and Indonesia. All presenters, lectures, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. In this special morning, we have several agenda. The first agenda is reciting the Holy Quran by Rizki Indalestari. She is the first winner in reciting Quran for university student Quran Championship Indonesia. Please welcome Rizki Indalestari. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. <laughs> الذي خلق سبع سماوات طباقا Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you, Miss Indah. Harum semerbak melati putih, dipetik dari tepilah taman. Darah membawa sekapur siri dalam alunan tari persembahan. Now we come to the second agenda. Performing Malay traditional welcoming dance. Tari persembahan, as known as welcoming dance, is one of the Malay traditional dances which is generally presented to respect the honorable guests coming to Riau. This dance implies the hospitality of Malay community. Now, please welcome the dancer of Tari Persembahan. Thank <laughs> you. 
The next agenda is singing the national anthem Indonesia Raya. In this occasion, we will present the music video on your screen. Now we come to the next agenda. Remark from the chairperson of the Universitas Riau in a national conference on science and environment 2020. Allow me to welcome Professor Dr. Nur Islami. Professor Dr. Nur Islami is a coordinator of Master Music Education Study Program, Universitas Riau. His age scopus index is A. Currently, he is in charge of the Vice President of Physic Association Indonesia for Rio Province. Please welcome Professor Dr. Nur Islami. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammada rasulullah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Wa ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammad. Good morning. First of all, on behalf of the organizing committee, I wish to extend everyone welcome you all to the Universitas Riau International Conference on Science and Environment in Pekanbaru, the home of Melayu. Your Excellency, Professor Dr. Saiful Bahri MSc, the Vice Rector of Universitas Riau. Your Excellency, Professor Dr. Almahdi Sahja, the Head of Institute of Research and Community Services, Universitas Riau. Your Excellency, Dr. Emil Daverdaus, the Secretary of Institute of Research and Community Services, Universitas Riau. The Honorable, our great keynote speaker, 
and speaker, distinguished speaker, ladies and gentlemen. Matahari terbit pagi menjelang, burung kasturi menari-nari. Kami ucapkan selamat datang. Terima kasih berkenan menghadiri konferen virtual URRC ini. Ladies and gentlemen, the URRC committee would like to say thank you to the Institute of Research and Community Services Universitas Riau for the support and assistance during the preparation of the conference along this time. We are very grateful to all the keynote speaker and speaker to attend and share their knowledge and information in this conference. Our great appreciation should be addressed to all organizing committee who have kindly dedicated both their time and energy to make this conference possible. Ladies and gentlemen, in this URIC 2020, we have invited four keynote speaker Professor Dr. Kari Rinker Stepper from the University of Chicago, USA. Professor Dr. Eng Lamberto Tonchin from the University of Bologna, Italy. Professor Dr. Insinyur Ari Sandia Fitri, MSc from Universitas Riau, Indonesia. And Dr. Michiko Hosubichi from Kyoto University, Japan. Thank you for attending this virtual conference. In this opportunity, I would like to inform that the committee received a number of 191 full paper from the Colombia, Italy, Russia, China, Vietnam, India, Iraq, and Indonesia. However, after reviewing a total number of 163 paper have been accepted for the oral presentation, which is divided into 12 parallel sessions. All the accepted paper will be submitted to IOP for publication, which is indexed by Scopus, inshallah. Finally, once again, welcome to URIC 2020 virtual conference of new normal era and high NS conference. Wabillahi topic wal hidayah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Professor, for the remark. Continuing to the next speech, we would like to request the honor from the Vice Rector of Universitas Riau, Professor Dr. Shaiful Bahri, as the representative of the Rector Universitas Riau to deliver the opening mark and also to appreciate to this conference. His Excellency, Professor Dr. Shaiful Bahri, the time is yours. Letik jemari nak darah menyulam, silap seketika jarum pun jatuh. Pembuka kata dengan salam. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yang terhormat. Ketua LPPM, Sr. Dr. Almasdi Saza, SMP. Yang kami hormati, Sekretaris LPPM. Sasriau, Dr. Imelda Firdaus, Ketua URIC, Profesor Dr. Nur Islami. Very, well, very warm welcome for the keynote speakers, Professor Dr. Kerry Rinka, Sifa, University of Chicago, US, Professor Dr. Lamberto Troncin, University of Bologna, Italy, Professor Dr. Alessandria Fitri, University of Riau, Michiko Hosobuchi, PhD, Kyoto University, and for all the participants, invited speaker, and for the, all of the participants in this uh, conference. Dear speakers, participants, distinguished guests, Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, on behalf of University of Riau, it is my great honor to welcome more than 100 delegates. It is actually 
163 participants to URIS 2020, University of Rio International Conference on Science and Environment. Honorable guys, URIS 2020, it is organized and sponsored by University of Rio, especially by Institute of Research and Community Services, or we call LPPM, in accordance to its mission to creative to create creative and innovative and competitive academic through research and devotion to community based on science and technology by 2035. Hope this event can be held in every year. Unlike last year, for this year should be held through virtual conference because of we are in normal era amid global COVID-19. An international academic conference is one of the best gathering platform to expose and disseminate research funding, research finding, as well as receive feedback from those working in similar field, as it is the place where professional from academia, industry, and government can exhibit their research work to public. Again, a new knowledge, etching ideas, and establish new networking. Hosting international conferences in, is in line with the policy and the strategy of University of Riau in terms of promoting outcome of research to national and international academic and industrial communities. In addition, the university also support its staff to present his or her research in international level. The OCRIS conference aims at bringing together scientists and environmentalists from Indonesia, as well as from around the world, both in academic and industrial sectors to share the, the fundamental knowledge and reason application relevant to the field of science and environment. The time for this today conference is elevating science and environmental quality for sustainability, sustainable life. I wish that the, this conference will not only become a place to share your research outcome, but also be a step for establishing academic, academic uh, cooperation among participant institutions. Dear participants and colleagues, nowadays we are facing a COVID-19. It is extremely important to have an understanding of environmental issues. This is because the human economy is engaged in a wide range of activities that are causing enormous damage to the ecosystem that sustain both our species and a legacy of biodiversity. All around the world, all of us, this is a witnesses by pollution, climate warming, collapsing fisheries, deforestation, the degradation of agricultural soil, extinction and engagement of species, endangerment of species, and other damage, including COVID-19 pandemic. An increasing world population in a world of finite natural resources require even more innovative, not only environment, but also science, knowledge, and effort to solve societal future challenges. The science and environmental for an environment program for keynote speakers and over 100 contributors around the world paper will bring you up to date in all topic areas of modern science and environment to address solution for global challenge, parallelization, and plenty of time for networking opportunities. We are honored 
by the exceptional response to the Eucharist conference and the quality and number of contribution. You have made this even possible. We thank you for that and every special recognized and incredible work that community that committees that committees and volunteers have done to organize this conference today. We will do our best to make your stay a success, useful, enjoyable, and unforgettable. And at the end, welcome to this conference. Bilahi Taufiq Wadayah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Professor, for the remark. Now we come to the next agenda, performing doa that will be led by Dr. Jismulatif. Please welcome Dr. Jismulatif. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ladies and gentlemen, before we pray, let us nod our hearts for a few seconds and concentrate on remembering God the Almighty for success of this event. O oh Lord, the most gracious, the most merciful, we give up our hearts and souls to you to thank and ask for forgiveness and protection. O oh Lord, we have indeed believed Forgive us the our sins. Save us from the gun of fire. O oh Lord, the most gracious, the most merciful. This morning, we are gathering in virtual international conference. Therefore, we are praying, expecting your blessings and favor always with us. Rabbana wa la tahmil alayna isran kama hamaltahu wa la ladina min qablina. Rabbana wa la tuhammilna ma la tuqatalana bih. Wa'afu anna wawfir lana warhamna. Anta maulana fansurna lal qawmil kathirin. Allahumma rinal haqqa haqqa wa zudna jistinabah. Wa arinal batila batila wa zudna jistinabah. Rabbana atina fi dunia hasana. Wa fil akhirati hasana. Wa qina azaban nar. Subhana rabbika rabbi inzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursalin wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Thank you Dr. Jismulatif Dang merdu bunda berjasa Hang Tuah Putra Teladan, konferensi internasional telah dibuka. Makalah terbaik kami sajikan. Ladies and gentlemen, in this occasion, we would like to announce the best papers of this international conference. There are six best papers with two categories which selected by the committee based on the merit and particular criteria. All the names mentioned will be shown on the screen. Student category, Kelly Alvarado et al. from Universidad Francisco de Paula Santander, Colombia. Clara Tarania Pramodia et al. from Universitas Riau, Indonesia. Ignatius Ludi Indra Purnaba et al. from Universitas Gajah Mada, Indonesia. Nismala Dewi et al. Universitas Riau from Indonesia. Professional category.
Evi Suryati at all Universitas Riau Indonesia Wajiran at all Universitas Teknorat Indonesia Hongwan Gok at all to Dalmat University Vietnam Congratulations to all of the best papers Ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of our opening program. We would like to deliver our sincere appreciation to all of the contributing parties, the Vice Rector of Universitas Riau, the Head of LPPM Universitas Riau, the Secretary of LPPM Universitas Riau, the Chairman of this conference, the keynote speakers, presenters, committee, and distinguished guests. And I close with a pantun. Bujang dan darah tinggi semampai, senyum dan sapa sepanjang hari. Konferensi internasional telah dimulai, menaikkan taraf pendidikan negeri. I'm Anissa Permata Islami. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to invite you all for the photo session. Please turn on your video camera and we will do some screenshots in 15 seconds. Thank you. Again, please turn on your video camera and we will do some screenshots in 15 seconds. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the photo session. Please turn on your video camera and we will do some screenshots in 15 seconds. Thank you. Again, please kindly turn on your video camera because we will do some screenshots in 15, 15 seconds. That's all for the photo session. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, after the photo session, we have a short break in five minutes in order to have a transition to our next session, which is the keynote speaker's pre presentation. Kindly please stay tuned in this conference. Thank you. Dah, dah, dah selesai. Mau berangkat sekarang? Dah, dah, daftar. Daftar lah. Bismillah.
Get everything ready, uh, MC. You can start now. Okay, good. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the keynote speaker session. But before we move on, allow me to introduce our key great keynote speakers. The first is Professor Dr. Kerry Winker Skeffer from University of Chicago, USA. And the second is Professor Dr. Eng Lamberto Troncin from University of Bologna, Italy. And the third is Professor Dr. Ari Sandhya Fitri from University Riau, Indonesia. And last but not least, Dr. Michiko Hosobuchi from Kyoto University. Now I would like to invite the moderator for our keynote, for our keynote speaker session. Please welcome Dr. Novitri as the moderator for the first and the second keynote speaker presentation. Thank you. Um, the MC. Uh, well, in this morning, um, it's time for us uh, to listen, especially the first two keynote speakers. They are both from the North, uh, Professor Dr. Kerry Rinker Schaefer, and the second one is Associate Professor Dr. Lamberto Tronchin. Well, um, before we start, I would like also to address um, many thanks to the first one, uh, Your Excellency of the Pew Director of Universitas Real, Professor Dr. Saibul Bahri. And the next is Your Excellency as well, uh, that is the head of Institute of Research and Community Services of Universitas Real. And also, Your Excellency, the Chair of Conference, Professor Dr. Noor Islami. And next, dear speakers, participants, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to highlight uh, the first keynote speakers. So it's a time for us for sharing knowledge and expertise for, from the scientists, stakeholders, academia, professional, and industry and also government. Well, anyway, Professor Dr. Kerry Rinker Sever, um, her profile, uh, she received a Bachelor of Science from Biochemistry from the University of Cincinnati, and her PhD is from University of Kentucky, uh, majoring in biochemistry as well. And then her Postdoctoral Fellowship in Cancer Biology, 
and the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine and particularly in identifying mechanisms regulating the growth of cancer cells at metastatic um, series. And then besides, she also enjoying teaching students, especially on science education and public outreach. Next. Um, I also highlight as well, her research focuses on cancers, uh, most cancers, especially prostate cancers, ovarian cancer, kidney cancers, as well as on cells and genes, molecular and cellular on these diseases. So this is more on women health problem as well as for men's health matter. Uh, she is also a productive researcher because she has more than 100 publications and especially 77 as a main authors and then 221 co-authors. Um, and next, uh, she is also uh, handling a pilot study at, Rin at Rifkin Center investigating how ovarian cancer begins and progresses and then also he has educated more than 7,000 uh, people, included uh, university students, and this is free of charge. Well, um, for this session, we provide for 30 minutes, uh, include a session for question and answers. Prof, hello, Prof. Uh, there in US is, is in the evening, right, Prof? Anyway, um, now it's time for us to listen to her presentation. Uh, the title is What is Science in America Today? Lesson that she has learned from her recent experience with COVID-19. Okay, the time is yours, Prof. Thank you. So the presentation will make uh, we provide the time, it's about 15 minutes. And it just can be, um, it couldn't be uh, adjustable prof. So time is your prof. Your moderator may be uh, ah. carry still not ready because in the schedule. Oh, uh, oh really? Yeah, Prof. yeah, yeah. Uh, carry will uh, talk uh, about the 10 Okay, so okay, okay. We can continue for the second uh, presentation. Oh, so we, we move to second presentation? Yes. Yeah, because it's not time right. We do have um, uh, break time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, okay, sorry. Anyway. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, we come to the second one uh, because, you know, we use uh, the time a bit early for this presentation. So she's just, uh, I mean, the first uh, keynote speaker is still preparing. So now we come to second keynote speakers. That is Associate Professor Dr. Lamberto Tronchin. So, professor, here, associate. yeah, Associate Professor. Not Associate Professor, full professor. Oh, full professor. Okay, sorry. That's what I received online. Anyway, um, we just showed the video, right? Uh, for her, for his presentation. All right. Um, Prof, uh, Professor Dr. Lamberto Tronchin, uh, she worked at the Department of Architecture, University of Bologna, Italy. Uh, in this session, we only uh, observe uh, his video because it's very late morning now in Italy. So now I highlight first the profile of Professor Dr. Lamberto Tronchin. So, um,
um, Professor Lambert Tronchins, he did uh, studying his master's up to PhD degree at the same university. I mean here at the University of Bologna. Um, his PhD degree is in, a, in applied physics, particularly on architectural acoustics. And then at, uh, in brief, his expertise also includes in mechanics of musical instrument and on noise and vibration. He did his postdoctoral scholarship on room acoustics. Uh, as um, in addition, he has published more than 200 papers. Uh, for your information, uh, during the last two years, he has published 21 publications. So 14 papers as main authors and seven as co-authors. And then, um, in the past, from 2000 and 2008, uh, he was the chair of the musical acoustic group of the Italian Association of Acoustics, uh, acoustic consultant as well, especially in designing and building. And then, uh, Professor Tronchins also is the president of Italian sections of Audio Engineering Society. And beside, he is also an associate ed editor of the Journal of the Audio Engineering Society. Then, of course, he has been reverie for international journals in European countries. Um, we, we know that uh, from West, uh, yeah, in West Europe to East Europe. Uh, and then, um, now, uh, before we listen to the video of Professor Lamberto Tronchins, again from the committee, we also remind, please, the presenter's ID, um, rename again according to your registered name, uh, and then your ID papers, and then following also the room number. Thank you very much. Now, um, let we listen together the video from the keynote speaker because it's very late morning there. So that's why uh, he sends the video to us as the committee. Let's um, we enjoy this um, presentation. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Lamberto Tronchi. I'm a professor of environmental applied physics from University of Bologna. I'm pleased to give you this keynote during the Eurix conference and I wish to thank Professor Nuri Islami for having invited me to join. The title of my keynote is 3D Sound Spatialization in Architectural Acoustics During the Era of Pandemic. This is the summary of my talk. After a brief introduction, I will focus about the problem that I will going to study with you. And I'm going to focus about 3D auralization. 3D auralization is a method that we employ when we are going to reproduce virtually the acoustics of a room. Moreover, I will focus also about nonlinear convolution. Nonlinear convolution is another method that we normally have developed when we were going to study the acoustics of musical instruments, but we apply this method together with 3D auralization. I'm going to show you also some tools that we have developed in my university, with my team, and some practical case studies of system emulation. The first case study will be the Teatro Gallia of Rimini. This is a theater that has been reconstructed a few years ago after the bombing during the Second World War. However, the movie that I have prepared about this theater has a, a fair acoustics, a fair sound for a reproduction by means of zoom. For this reason, instead of the theater, 
I will show you a movie that we have developed about the Basilica of San Vitale in Palermo, where the audio is less important and is more important to see also visually what happened during the reconstruction. The question is, First of all, which are the loudspeakers speaker that we can employ during the analyzation? In other words, who is where? Which is the loudspeaker speaker and where is the loudspeaker? speaker? For example, in this picture, you can see what we normally we have when we are dealing with the W surround or similar system in which we have some loudspeaker speaker in front of us, other loudspeaker speaker on the back, and some loudspeaker speaker sometimes on the left or the right. But when we are going to reproduce the sound, we need to reproduce some sources. So the question is, where are they? They are there. For example, we have a speaker in front of us, or a singer in front of us. We have some musicians on the left, in front of the back. Other people playing music or giving a speech or ballet or other things in the front in the right side or in the back in the right side. Finally, the question is also where we are, you are there. So it means that you wish to experiment this virtual reconstruction in a specific environment, in a specific room, for example, an opera house. So we need also to take into account the acoustics of that specific opera house. Which are the methods that we normally can employ when we are going to reproduce the acoustics virtually? We have several possibilities. The most common possibility is to use some discrete array. It means that we should use discrete microphones and discrete, a discrete number of loudspeakers. For example, if you have an orchestra like this, you could put some microphone on the top of each musician or each group of musicians. And then when you are going to play back, you have a several, but a specific, a discrete number of loud speakers. For example, five or eight or more loud speakers, but some discrete speaker. This is a normal method that normally we have also in the cinema. But another method that we have already developed in our university is the ambisonic system. It means that we are able to reproduce the sound putting the loud speakers in some specific position. The easiest way is to put the loud speakers in the corner of a room. So if you have a rectangular room, you need to employ eight different loud speakers. This was the system that we developed in 2001 that is based on the convolution method. It means that you have some signal, some input response, and by means of convolution, you are able to reconstruct the sound. When you are going to record the music, you need some microphone, like specific microphone, B-format microphone, like this one at the right side in which you should employ at least, like in this example, four different uh, microphones. The other possibility, one more possibility, is to employ the stereo dipole method. The stereo dipole method we have developed in 2005, indeed in the Alekino listening room. It employs two different loud speakers in front of you, plus eventually other two loud speakers on the back. And if you are able to properly remove the cross talk, it means that the sound coming from the loudspeaker in front of you of the left side should focus only in your left ear and not in the right ear. If you are going to employ this uh, filtering system, and here you have the software, the, the formula in which you can effectively perform this uh, filtering you will be able to listen the sound exactly in the same way as you are going to listen the sound by means of headphones. But here you can also move, turn your head with the headphone. When you move your head, you cannot take fixed the 
head form. The head form are moving together with your head. So it's quite better to listen, reproduce the music by means of satellite. But there is a third method that we are going now to employ in a, a new listening room that are going to be finished in 2021 in Faenza. That is a little uh, city, 60,000 inhabitants at 60 kilometers from Bologna. And this listening room will be called Sipario under the Sipario project and will employ the welfare system. Welfare system, it means that you have a continuous number of loudspeakers in some arrays. Here you have a picture of continuous loudspeakers. Sometimes these uh, continuous rows are all around you, like a rectangular or quadratic like here. And uh, this means that you are able to reproduce amplitude and phase of a signal that is going to propagate inside the room. This method has a specific uh, possibility that is very useful when you want to simulate what happens in the room because you could also virtually move the sound sources. On the other hand, with the other system, you couldn't move the sound sources. They were fixed in one position. Here you can pan the position, so for this reason you can hear what happened, eventually also going very close to you and then run away. This is very useful. Let's go now to the nonlinear convolution. Nonlinear convolution is a method that we started to develop when we were going to simulate the acoustics of musical instruments. In our first paper in 1998, we employed the measurement on violins made by means of MLS system, MLS method, and we employ this measurement of input responses in order to emulate by means of convolution the sounds of the musical instruments, the sound of the violin. Of course, this method was only able to reproduce the linear component of the musical instrument, that is normally in the sound chest. This is a new method because after the method MLS, we move to the new method that is the exponential sense strip, also called CHIRS. This method is useful because it was able to separate the linear component of the input response from the harmonic distortion. This was not possible to do with the MLS system. For example, here you have a measurement of the input responses. So, if you are going to play the sine three and convert with the inverse filter, you were able to obtain the input responses. And in time domain, the input response is here. And what you have before is only the harmonic distortion. So, for example, here you have one distortion, two and so on. So you have different order of harmonic distortion. It means that if your, your purpose was to simulate only the linear part, you can just widow in time domain the component that you need. On the other hand, if you want to emulate also the harmonic distortion, you need to develop a new method that is no more a linear method, but it is a new nonlinear method, a nonlinear convolution. And this, this is what we developed. We started from the Hammerstein model and we employed the Volterra series for nonlinear system, time invariant system. It means that we are able to add here in the sum not only the linear component, but different, up to infinite in this case, different components, different kernels, depending on the value of this. KM. For example, in my first paper in 2012, I proposed the value of different five kernels from one to five, and this is the value of the kernels. And in another paper of 2015, we developed a new method for measuring the input responses that is not only a chill exponential sensory, but a synchronized exponential sensory. 
or better, synchronized cosine strip. Why cosine and not sine? Because cosine is perfectly symmetric during the origin of the axis. For this reason, we developed a new method that was able to go up to the 10th order. So in my second paper, 2015, I proposed the value also of the other sixth order of harmonic distortion. And this is the paper that we published together with uh, Vanda Lisa Colley in 2015. This is an example of the results. It means that if you are going to put this different uh, sign strip inside a, link, a system, you have distorted output. You can see the amplitude is different, but not only the amplitude, but also the waveform is different. And when you are going to simulate what happened in the nonlinear system, if you use the proper gain, you have a result that is very similar to the real world. So it means what you really record. On the other hand, if you use a wrong gain, for example, instead of the second one, you want to use the last one, when you simulate the result, you have a completely different result. So it means that this result, so the, this nonlinear component should also take into account the different gains. So you can understand that the problem is not very easy. These are the tools that we developed. For the measurement of the kernels, we use the Shilab. And for the multi uh, convolution, so the nonlinear convolution, we use a VST plugin. This is an example of the code in Shilab, and this is a picture from the VST that we developed. And we call the Voltana Convolver, of course. This is an example of another problem that we found, that when we are going to discretize the waveform, you could have a problem. You can see this part, because the delta lira could be shifted in different samples. For this reason, you should be able to correct this mistake by means of a new corrective filter that was able to properly reproduce and obtain a corrected delta, delta Dirac. Because otherwise, when you are going to simulate the nonlinear system with the harmonic distortion that you have obtained by means of a not proper corrected filter, the results are not enough. This is an example of simulation. An emulation of guitar overdrive. The guitar overdrive is a strongly nonlinear sound system. It means that when you are going to play some music or to play just a pure note inside, you have an output with several harmonic distortion. Not only the pure tone here, but several harmonic distortion. So what happened? Happened that we add not only the linear component, but also the the first five harmonic distortion. So you have here the original linear, and then second, third, fourth, and fifth order of harmonic distortion. So you can understand that when you are going to simulate a strongly nonlinear system, if you decide to use only the linear one, you have only this one. If you are going to go up to the fifth, you have a result that is much more similar to the original one. If you are going to simulate up to the 10th order, you have also more signal here. And here you have a comparison between the first five harmonic distortion and the original one. You can see that if you are considering only the first five harmonic distortion, you are losing all these high frequency distortions. But you are maintaining this one. Tenth order, we found that it was a good compromise because if you go to upper order, you need a specific acquiring system that is going to uh, record very high frequencies. So this is the reason why we focus on up to the tenth order. And this is another example, a final example of this part. This is about what we obtain in the flute. Here you have a real performance. 
in the second row, you have the root of performance that employ only the linear component input responses. And the third row, you have the virtual performance that is going to employ up to fifth order of harmonic distortion. Look to the waveform. I'm sorry that I cannot play here because we are not in presence. We are I'm in remote giving the old presentation. And you can give a look only to the waveform here. You can see that in this part of the waveform, here the waveform is very similar to the emulated one, considering the fifth order of harmonic distortion, but the linear one is different. So you can see, just to give a look to the waveform, that the third line is quite better instead of the second one. Now we have the examples. As I told you, originally I supposed to present to you a movie about the Teatro Gagnorini, but the sound quality was very bad. And instead of playing a movie of Rimini, I decided to play a different movie about the Basilica and San Vitale. But I still wish to focus about Rimini because this is a, a theater that was reconstructed and opened just two years ago, in 2018, in October, so less than two years ago. And the history was this one. It was destroyed during the Second World War. This is a picture that was taken in 1910. And this is a render of a theater. This is the plane, the section of the theater. And uh, what we did, we did this specific operation. So we created a model. We decided to focus also about the different direction of the sound in the model. And uh, it means that we were able to add the different uh, direction of the sound using the head rate and transfer function that were measured at MIT in, uh, in 1995. So, before playing the movie, I wish just to uh, conclude my keynote with it, these few lines. The Volterra approach is very useful when you want to emulate the harmonic components of system, nonlinear system, or weak nonlinear system. Because if the system is strongly nonlinear, you need also to add not only the harmonic distortion, but also other components of nonlinearity. Then, in order to properly measure the harmonic distortion, you need to develop a corrective filter, or on the other side, the synchronized cosine signal. Moreover, if you are able to focus the emulation only of weakly nonlinear musical system, like musical instrument, like a violinist, like a flute, we found that the Volterra method is uh, quite good. So we can really be able to provide good results only using the harmonic distortions. Still, we have to make other experiments on other non-linear acoustic or audio system, especially wave amplifiers that we know that are quite important also for the different marketing reasons. I'm going now to play the movie. It takes two minutes. However, remember that in order to properly appreciate the movie and especially the sound, we should make this play, not here in my computer, in remote, but in a listening like an ambisonic or wave synthesis drone. Let's now go to the movie.
Okay, that's all. Thank you for your attention. Have a good uh, conference and greet us again from Bologna, Italy. Bye. Moderator, we can continue for the next. Moderator, please. We go to go, go, go. Hello, can you hear me? Okay, now good sound. Can you hear me okay? Yes. <clears throat> okay, very good, because I wasn't able to hear you, so I was worried. So, let's see here. Next, uh, we continue well. to the next uh, keynote speaker, Professor Dr. Terry Rinker-Skever. Um, all right. Um, her, presenta her presentation title that is about what is science in America today um, and then lessons that she has learned from uh, her recent experience uh, with COVID-19. Isn't it wrong? Uh, well, anyway, uh, we highlight First, about the professor's profile. Uh, we know that uh, she is uh, working now at the Biological Sciences Division at the University of Chicago. Um, and then, at the moment, uh, her corpus index is 35. Um, briefly, uh, her Bachelor of Science, uh, it is in uh, biochemistry. Uh, he did, uh, she did in the University of Cincinnati. And then continue to her PhD in biochemistry as well uh, at University of Kentucky. And then she did as well uh, for her postdoctoral fellowship. Uh, in cancer biology and the Johns Hopkins School of Medicine. Right, Professor? Okay. Absolutely. Uh, now in Indonesia, we are in, we're still mourning, Prof. Uh, but however, in, in there, in Chicago, uh, I bet it is in the evening. So Yes, it is. <laughs> nice to meet you in this conference. Oh, nice to meet uh, you too. Anyway. Um, I continue um, more uh, about your uh, profile. So, um, your, I mean, um, Doctor uh, Professor Doctor Carrie Rinfus covers focus research that is on cancer, um, especially on prostate cancer, ovarian cancer, kidney cancers. Uh, as well as on cells, gene, 
uh, and molecular cellulars on these diseases. So correct me if I'm wrong, Professor. Uh, but, um, you know, um, cancer disease is uh, uh, the strong uh, source of death of the people. So based on the United Nations report, so this is the fifth ranks in the world now. And anyway, um, Professor Carey also produced uh, more than 100 publications, uh, lots of citation, and in line with her expertise. Um, and then your last publication is just about X, uh, AXL is a logical molecular target in the head and next squamous cell carcinoma in, 19, uh, in, 20, in 2018, is it? Ah, all right, thank you. And the one that I like it, that is your, uh, what we call it, um, uh, your publication about, uh, the title is Stopping Cancer Before It's Colonized. Uh, yes, I impressed uh, this uh, research. Anyway, uh, she is also conducting a pilot study at Rifkin Center at University of Chicago, um, especially investigating how ovarian cancer begins and progresses. And then she she has educated more than seven thousand people, uh, as well as the students and. The good point is uh, you did free of charge, uh, you know, as a, as a team as well. Anyway, um, now we can't wait um, to listen to your, um, your presentation um, entitled, uh, as I spoken before. So what is science in America? And then what is lesson learned uh, during COVID-19. Thank you, Thank you. time is yours. So we provide about 30 minutes include a session of question and answer. Uh, enjoy okay. the presentation, Prof. So it's, it's I will, I will. I will do my best to be on time. <laughs> um, let me see if I can do this with my, uh, my screen. Do you see my screen now? I hope. I'm the only person in the United States who hasn't used Zoom yet. This is my first time on Zoom. So, see it okay, everybody? See my screen? Okay. So, um, thank you so much for your kind introduction. Uh, I spent my career, as indicated, on cancer research. Specifically, I focused on the, the movement of cancer cells from the primary site to the second site. And in many ways, there are parallels uh, with infection. Um, what what uh, I came to reason or, or understand over the years, and in the past, especially in the past five years, is how much our education system has changed and how much literacy and science has lagged behind. And especially for our undergraduates, I found that they really needed time and energy and dedicated efforts in teaching science. So what I want to talk about today um, is um, uh, in particular, one of my undergraduate students, a little conversation we had, but this represents students that I've had over the years, and especially in the last, as I said, five years. Um, what I found is that the students lack a bit more of the kind of fundamental sense of how to do science. They know a lot of facts. They know a ton of information but they don't get much experience actually using the scientific method in labs, in their courses, and in discussions. Um, and what I've also found is that the students tend to, well, there's a lack of the humanities and there's a lack of just the broader sense of the world in many times 
there's so much effort that's been spent on material knowledge and getting the data, but not much as much time thinking about it. And this was brought back to me as I prepared for this, uh, thinking back to my time with Tanya at the University of Kentucky um, and how different my education was compared to what I was giving to my students. So this is an example of one of the conversations I had with a pharmacy student who was taking a course in cancer metastasis with me. My course is very different because I focus so much on practical skills. And now the course will change over to being completely on practical skills. But here's how she talked. She had read a book about Henrietta Lacks, the person who was a source of the HeLa cancer cell line. And she looked back to her biology courses and she said, since our first biology class, we learned that things are already discovered. Acknowledging every day a little more and a little more, it makes us feel like all the main discoveries in science make total sense and that they are just basic. They're so easy. For example, until this class, I never wondered how crazy and incredible Gregor Mendel must have sounded. Now that was the guy with the pea pods and, and figuring out genetics. Think about it. Doesn't it make perfect sense that anybody would be astonished just to think a human being is on the moon? We've come to a point where we don't feel how extraordinary it is that cells are a person, Henrietta Lacks, lived more outside her body than inside of her when she was alive, that they were used to make discoveries that they have such a quantity that they're way more now than there ever were in their body. Is it normal to think that all these things could, that could make so much good could come from something but so bad? Is it, you know, I think that most people have lost the ability to see the extraordinary in things. As we know more, we link ideas and make it easy to understand, but we've lost our capacity to be amazed. This really was very stunning to me because if you lose the ability to be amazed in science, you kind of miss the point. In Dad weren't teaching these skills and we don't teach them in most of our classes. So what she came down to was saying that we have ways away and for her experience specifically, we're normalizing the extraordinary. And in her views, she felt that we were losing the main objective. And as I looked at this, because she prepared a little uh, booklet for me as a, a present, I thought that it was really quite profound and that I needed to redouble my efforts and make more effort in my class to fill in these gaps. And I've worked with a few hundred students now on this. And if I look back, especially since I've had so much time with COVID-19 to think and be in my house, um, I realize that most students in most of our science classes, we really don't talk about science. We talk about scientific information, but we really don't tell people how things have been discovered. We memorize, we do these things. And we've had a recurring problem in our country, at least, that many people will say on a topic, whether it's something about the environment or it's about COVID-19 or it's something else, that the science is settled. There's no discussion, nothing's needed, no more questions, it's done. It's just silly. The science is never settled, but they don't know. So I see that side. What I got to see during COVID-19, or what I like to call is the COVID time, was that this also permeates some of our higher level uh, administrative leadership, et cetera, in the sciences and medicine. Instead of talking to people about how things were found or the data that they found, we were told to follow the science. Listen to the science. If we respect the science, don't go against the science as if it were some mystical entity with enlightened views that could tell us what to do. As far as the practical aspects for American citizens, we were admonished to do this. Follow the enlightenment, don't ask any questions, don't ask why there aren't you know, issues, changing rules, these things happening. We're done. Now, when I was growing up, I can tell you that people would not just have followed something blindly like that. 
And at least in our case, we were initially were to spend 15 days to slow the disease spread, and then we go forward. And none of that's changed. And I realized that our population really doesn't know to, how to counter scientific questions or how that's put at you as far as data goes. So I think the long-term implications of that have really made me, again, redouble my efforts and work on how to, how to address this. So what these passages to me, this information I just shared, demonstrates the, medical, the failure of our medical and research establishments and educational system to serve American citizens. And I am part of that. I take responsibility for that too. Because science is way too important. It's not a thing. It's not a noun. It's not even an a direct object. It's a way of thinking. And it helps us solve problems and learn new things. But it doesn't happen without humans. Our humanity is part of what helps us find cures for things. It's not technology, it's not fancy machines, and it's not zillions of dollars either. That can help, but without the minds of beautiful human minds, it's not gonna happen. Scientific knowledge is subject to continual revision and the, think the scientific thinking is so good for us. It expands cognitive, emotional, creative, and social skills, and science is a social process. We do it with other people. We share with other people. So it reinforced the idea that I had that now more than ever, both students and our society at large would benefit from these skills. So I looked at, at COVID-19 as a call for me to do what I could to return to fundamentals. I had done quite a bit of work to put together some courses and that, but I kind of stalled because, you know, that's always hard, it's challenge, et cetera. But I want to share that with you now. So I had planned a very, I had thought of all these details that I wanted to share and I realized 20 minutes, are you crazy? You can't get this done in 20 minutes. So I've taken a part of the description of the course um, and I can make all of these pieces of information plus tools that I use, resources, et cetera, available uh, to anyone who's interested. But basically the course focuses on these processes as students learn to use them while they're creating ideas and projects of their own. So they wind up using everything along the way in order to actually have a work product where these all have gone together. So we emphasize learning how to use tools of creativity, how to really use the steps of the scientific method to solve problems. They get to exercise what they, their intelligences are and in a group, you have many different ways of thinking. You have many different backgrounds. So that's very good. They also, we also specifically teach so, uh, team skills, parts of the team. Um, we go, go over interpretation of data, how you find good questions, how you form testable, falsifiable hypotheses, and design well-controlled experiments. Um, ew, well that duplicated, that's not good. This is not double vision, it's uh, my, my slide. So the focus is on habits of high-performing teams, team research, and they, throughout the time, have the opportunity to share what they're doing along the way. So whether it's writing projects or speaking projects, or those, they have a lot of opportunities to get feedback and get used to taking risks and talking and giving ideas in front of other people. This is the interior component of the brochures and I can provide, as I said, to everyone. But what I wanted to, to highlight is one aspect of the course that I think is particularly um, unusual and has been very, very useful to students. And I call it the studio. In the United States, in humanities departments like English departments or where there are writing departments uh, where they do a lot of writing, they'll have writing studios or even uh, um, quantitative learning studios. But we don't have anything like that in most of our science programs, at least not that I know of. So what I developed the studio to be is a place where students can come and talk to each other. I'm there to serve as a resource. We have resource materials and that's so that it's kind of almost like a writer's room. People work on writing uh, skills. 
speaking skills, but also on their science skills. And it really works well. It takes time and effort, but it works well. And I think it's something, especially for writing and especially for um, telling information, speaking about information in a way that's a narrative as a story while keeping it very information rich is something we don't do. We don't teach it all to our students. We really don't spend a lot of time um, even sharing stories about how science is done and how it's been done historically. And that's something that, that I realized that was missing and it was very beneficial to me when I was in graduate school. So basically the studio is a place where I want it to be a place where the students want to come and want to interact and they really get into depth on things. And that also is a place for them to tie the science to the world. Because inevitably, something will come up on the news, from the news, or something, a story will come up. And now, now they're integrating that experience of thinking about science and working on science with the greater world. And those have been very separated in the majority of our science courses over the years. Now I was very worried about going over, so I'll be coming to uh, coming to the next final couple slides, and I can go back in any detail that would be useful. But I have one more uh, question from Anna, my student from Spain. She asked me one that was a real kicker, as I would say. She said, "Why are there so many people and so little humanity? What is that in our culture?" And I thought a lot about it and actually spent several months researching the question because I thought it was a good one, an important one. And what I discovered is that by implementing some of the, the newer philosophies that have gained power and strength in our universities, postmodernism, cultural Marxism, and some others, they've really de-emphasize what I would call the storytelling, the more humanities uh, method of telling stories and telling the larger history and even what's currently going on in, in our world. And it's referred to as often as the heroic narrative of a story. Actually, a man named Joseph Campbell, who was a comparative, um, he did comparative studies on mythologies and religion, found patterns back you know, in the 50s, I would say, but then developed them over time. And he formed what they called a heroic narrative. And um, the hero's journey, which is depicted in this uh, cycle here, uh, it, it's a little figure that I can't see right now on my computer, so I can't read it through it. But basically, it's a story where you have the person that goes off into an adventurous situation, and they tackle very difficult things, and they go through a process that changes them and that they come back different and wanting to share information and integrate back. And when you look at stories of the scientists, any scientist, any graduate student, they can fit that narrative. They call it a monomyth. And seeing your life as that really changes your view on things. And the example that I will not have time to get into in detail, but directly goes with COVID-19, is a story of a single physician Dr. Vladimir Zelenko, who's in the picture in the middle, the private practice physician taking care of a community of people when COVID hit. And his story is one of trying to find um, a good way to treat a patient early to intervene in the development of the uh, infection. His resources and, he said, a call, a feeling that he had. You know, that inkling that you have that an experiment might just work. It's a hunch, it's a, it's a drive. He pursued that and then went to the battle. And it was a battle that was somewhat actually largely shaped, at least in our country, on political issues. He found that the early treatment patients within the first 24 to 48 hours, maybe the first few days of a COVID-19 infection with hydroxychloroquine which is a very well-known, well-characterized, extensively studied, studied drug, had a dramatic effect for patients. 
basically it's a combination of that drug along with zinc, which goes into the cells and actually has the effect on the virus. And then of course, a follow-up antibiotic that he found worked well together. Unfortunately, that doesn't make a lot of money. And there are higher things at work. And um, the story of how he's pursued it, how other scientists around the world have too. There's Didier in France, um, Rich at Yale, there's many others. And now, because Zelenko was willing to stay in the fight for six long months with massive, massive pushback and collecting friends along the way that found his work interesting, he's coming to be seen very clearly that he is right. Now, this isn't a big, you know, revelation to the most of the world. I think there are many, many, many countries that appreciate the utility of this drug. But it's a great example in my mind of a modern day current hero, hero's journey using all the tools that would be covered in my course and showing the parts where your humanity, your character, your verb, your willingness to stick with it can really make a difference to patients. And sadly, there are many patients in my country for whom it would have made a difference if they could have had it. So taken together, that's my brief description of something I'm very obsessed, very interested with. I think the education and the support of students and young scientists and any scientist is very important. And that's what I want to dedicate the remainder of my career to. So if there's any questions or anything I can lay on, please let me know. I tend to go over time. So I wanted to make sure I would be sure. So that's my presentation. Then. Now, uh, we open the session for question and answers, especially for the first three uh, speakers for proposing okay. questions. So, please. So, uh, there's yeah. a chat thing, right, that I should look for? Okay, let me look for chat. Oh, no, this is fine. Professor? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Ah, I'm Novi, Novi3. You may call me Novi as your Novi? moderator. Yeah. Um, yes, is it okay? Uh, we provide a uh, question and answer. Uh, we do have about 10 more minutes. Yeah. Uh, if, if there are some questions. Uh, if so not, the, the I, questions, I, yes. The, the questions would come in the chat, correct? Yes. All right. Gotcha. Okay. I'm curious uh, to know uh, about your works in uh, focusing you know, preparing future generation. So you provide young generation, especially university students, uh, so that they work um, according to a scientific way. Mm -hmm. So um, how long have, uh, have this program uh, has been run uh, by professor in this university? Um, and then, um, you know, uh, how many students join, and then uh, how significant the result? If I, I if we can, if we can, uh, let to know about this. Absolutely. Uh, so, right. so the um, I I have been doing. I started incorporating these practical skills in my courses many years back. And then as I would learn new things or read new things, I would add a little bit more. So yeah. the course was on cancer metastasis. Mm -hmm. But over time, it became more and more and more on the techniques and the tools. The students really appreciated it. I mean, some students, they don't like it so much. But after the, the class got a reputation, people knew what it was about. Um, they and about the experience people had, it became very popular. So I would teach it once, one time a year at that time. Um, I think I need to split it into multiple sessions because we would have maybe 30 students, 28 students, and that's a lot when you have teams and all the various assignments we do. Um, 
you know, some, I would say that the, the, the response is that some students that are used to always getting A's because they've mem you know, they learn one way, they learn in one way and they might get a B, then they might get upset. But even many of them have come back later and said, boy, I'm glad I learned how to write in that class. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm glad I took it. Um, the other thing I found was that for many of them, I might have spent an hour talking to them during the quarter, which we're on a quarter, which is 10 weeks. Mm -hmm. And I, they would say that of all their years at the university, I had spent more time with them than any other professor. And I thought about it and I thought, we're all busy, but this is really important because our culture's changed in, in our country. And young people, they don't talk to older people as much as they used to. Right. So there's a lot of information just about living that they don't know. And then we have these, um, we've had this thing happen over time. It's gotten crazy now. But with, with restrictions on speech and politically correct speech. And um, so students were afraid to talk. They were afraid to make, you know, make mistakes or say something. So we were able to just create that environment where people were comfortable by using humor. It, there's a lot of literature on humor and its ability to promote creativity. And so that became popular too. It was a place where students could be themselves. And so at, what are the outcomes? I've had many students over the years tell me, I started actually with graduate students with some of this, but I've had many students over the years write to me and say it was a, a, the only course they had like it. And they found it was something that could be very use to, useful to them broadly. Um, so I would say, the students do well. I see people improve on their skills when they come in from when they come in to when they end. And um, by focusing it now and pitching it from the point of view of the skills and the tools and that that you need, I think that clarifies things for people. But we still use cancer as a model. That's probably more information than you needed. But um, so overall, students appreciate it. They learn new skills, often find it to be useful. Some people that are more comfortable learning in another way, that's hard for them. But that's only a small percentage, I'd say. Oh, and how many students? Um, I probably have 200 students all the time with this, this teaching method, 200, 300 over, over the years. But this is a new class with the, the, the details of it. All right. Thank you, bro. Uh, we would like to invite Professor Titania. Uh, uh, Professor Titania works at uh, Rio University uh, in Pekanbaru. So, times um, is your from? Uh, thank hi, you. Tanya. Hi, hi, Carrie. Nice hi, to hi, see you. After this is so 24 great. years, right? Okay. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Reunification. <Sorry>. Reunification. <laughs> yes. Well, Carrie, That's very nice. thanks for That's that him. very good talk you gave. Uh, very interesting and um, also very um, very good for our uh, lecturers here to know about. Um, That's what we thought. Yes, I how thought. about to to really teach science? Now um, I'm, I'm interested in your studio course, right? So the studio course that you are developing or have done too. Do you so, think that studio? So yes. Do you, do you the think studio is actually part of the class? Oh, okay. So those, it's a, it kind of goes along with the class. There's a place. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. I, so it's I, not I a. Okay. 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 Sorry. So, so the class is um, okay. Uh, what's the the name of your class? That course uh, where you have the studio course. So, so we, so the class is science is science as a creative process. Okay, yes. Is the name of the class, okay? Yes. And, yeah. and then the sub, a sub part of the class is a studio that supports the class. It's kind of like oh, I see. Yes. a biology lecture, but then you have a lab, kind of. But it's not a lab, yes. it's a skills. Yeah. And 
my hope is that I can somehow penetrate the humanities. So people who are non-science majors might take a different version of it so that we can get a little out, you know what I mean? Outside of the biological sciences and that to, to the, you know, other, other parts of this university that they get no experience in the kind of critical skills and such. Anyway, about the studio, you had a question. Well, actually, uh, I, uh, okay, I thought the studio was a separate course, so it's in your class, right? So it's, um, what, what I was uh, trying to uh, uh, make uh, a question, so actually this class is very good mm -hmm. for uh, international collaborations in science and the humanities. Uh, do you think it can be done uh, virtual and can you have international students virtual at your, at this creative science class? So the virtual, I mean like, you know, using the Zoom and... Things. Well, that's what I was thinking about as we came upon this because I don't know if people in Indonesia or other countries that are taking part in this wonderful meeting, I don't know if this whole COVID-19 has made people crazy, but I went COVID crazy. I have a lot of time to think about this, okay? And it occurred to me that, you know, that what you had, we had talked about me visiting and talking about, you know, some of these pieces, I think you could do this over, you know, distance. I don't see any reason why you couldn't. Yeah, thanks. That, I mean, that's actually, I, uh, thank you, Professor Titania. I'm sorry about that, yeah. <laughs> you, thank uh, you very much. Yeah. Anybody that wants any information, nice. please. And, and thank you to uh, <laughs> Dr. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Thank, thank you, you to everyone. The question. So anyway, is that a real presentation uh, from thank you. The professor. So, so if I'm not mistaken, so your studious course is a kind of making bridge, you know, uh, dealing with the misconceptions uh, about science uh, yes. offered in the society, and then just trying to be settled through the studio course, isn't it, professor? So, so the studio part of it is, it's extra hours. So, for example, from let's say three o'clock in the afternoon to 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. I'm in a room called the studio oh, yeah. and the studio's big table and re you know, computers and, you know, reference books that, and students can just come in and say, Hey, it's kind of like office hours, but for everybody. Yeah. So, so it goes along with the material, you know, the assignments and things that are in the class. Yeah. But it, it also could work for just students that are in the sciences that need help with something. Really you know, uh, learning resources there, right? Library. Bingo. That's a good, yes, that's a better way to say it. Yes, uh, ma'am. Reference and many other reasons for the refreshment is also available. So we are <laughs> very impressed with your presentation, Professor Dr. Kerry Rinker Sebo. Thank so, you so much. Since there is I can't, wait. Work, uh, I can't wait to watch the rest. I'm excited. Uh, it's up. So we close this, we end this uh, presentation from uh, Professor Dr. Terry Rinker Sever. So thank you very thank much, you. Professor, for your sharing of your expertise. Thank you very thank much. Thank you for the opportunity. Take care. Yeah. How do I get up here? Oh, okay. So I had to switch up to it. I don't know. I don't know. I
Okay. Thank you, Dr. Novitri, as the moderator and also the keynote speakers. Now, um, I would like to welcome Dr. Daniel Shah as the moderator for the third and also the fourth keynote speaker's presentation. Please welcome Dr. Daniel Shah. Thank you. Thank you, Anisha. Thank you. Well, everyone, good morning to you all. I do hope that you still stand by and stay with us in this great conference. I even give a comment of Henry this um, the next section of our plenary here. And we got uh, two more panelists in this second plenary sessions. Um, the first keynote speaker, we got um, Professor Dr. Um, Ari Sandia Fitri MSC. And the last keynote speaker we got here, Michiko Sabuchi PSD. So the first opportunity we was like um, to invite uh, Professor Dr. Insignor Ari Sandia Fitri. Good morning, Prof. Morning, everybody. Oh, okay. Nice to meet you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For morning. Thank you for being our keynote Prof. speaker. Dr. Daniel Shah. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, everyone, I would like to read for you personal information and also credential of this handsome professor. Professor Ari got bachelor degree from um, University of San Ratulani, Manado. Oh, it's quite far from here. <laughs> All right. And he got master's degree from Manchester. It, it is located in the United Kingdom, of course, uh, majoring in engineering, civil, civil engineering um, faculty. And he pursued um, his doctoral program from the same university, uh, also in civil engineering faculty. And currently, he's also the dean of engineering faculty of our real university. And Professor Al here, his research interests are in risk analysis, mitigating of natural disaster, including weather modification. And he has got involved various prestigious projects, international and national. And Professor Harry also um, handle, used to handle infrastructure and transportation safety project. And uh, I don't need to mention uh, the other his credential here because his achievements has um, been a lot, if I should mention here. All right, without further ado, um, we will invite Professor Harry to present his paper. At this occasion, Professor Harry is going to present his paper entitled Evaluation of the, the Effectiveness Implementation of Weather Modification Technology for Mitigating Pitland Fires. This is a very um, hot issue, particularly in our province in Indonesia. Okay, uh, Prof, you got 15 minutes, and then we're gonna have question and answer. Time is yours, Prof. Thank you very much, Dr. Daniel. And I do hope that in 
at the same time, you will be a professor, Daniel. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, bro. All right. Yes, yeah. Uh, we'd like to evaluate, evaluate the effectiveness implementation of the weather modification technology for mitigating pitland fires. Honestly, the implementation of this weather, weather modification technology in Indonesia has been relatively new. And of course, it will challenging as this cutting edge technology may increase the precipitation rates or rain, we call normally rain. And therefore, it may reduce the risk of pit or forest fire hazard in the huge and massive areas. Can I, could I, uh, uh, display my my uh, presentation yeah, sure sure okay Absolutely. host disabled participant screen sharing uh, please uh, allow me to uh, enable this screen sharing please committee because in my laptop there's a pop-up host disabled participants screen sharing Okay, Prof. Okay, can... it's working now. Thank you. I appreciate that. Hang on. Uh, can you see my presentation here? I think. Yes. Okay. Very clear. Very clear. All right. Thank you very much. This is the condition of pitlands all over the world. Pitland area plays a crucial role for maintaining the sustainability of biodiversity conservation and climate regulation, of course, which would provide an important elements in supporting human welfare. However, Pitlands only cover 3% of the total area on the world, but 30% of the overall carbon storage in the earth was here. How, uh, this is the fact that you can see the distribution of pitland area all over the world. The most efficient terrestrial ecosystem in storing carbon in the world is pitland area. However, this is a fragile ecosystem as uh, this is performed by the accumulation of dense wet plant materials and carbon components. Hence, during dry season, this area prone to cause pit fires. It fire may release carbon into the atmosphere, causing smoke hazard disaster, and also subsequently will cause severe, severe environmental and social disaster. Here, why pit fires become important? We can look at it here. Normally, fire in the forest occurs on the top soil or on the trees. But in uh, pit land, it uh, can go under beneath the surface as smoldering fires. This very, very difficult, very, very difficult to, uh, 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 to abet this, to distinguish this. And if we would like to uh, extinguish this fire, we need a lot of water. And the presence of rain, basically, the presence of rains, again, or precipitation, high precipitation rates, will uh, extinguish this fire. This is uh, the condition 
this is forest fires the condition in USA in September 2020 up to now this is in Russia in Siberia fires occurred in huge massive area and in Indonesia during 10 years periods forest fires and pit fires may this, uh, reach this uh, East Asia region here and also Africa. Very, uh, uh, this is smoke hazard. This smoke hazard may reach a very huge area in Asia and Africa. In fact, Indonesia is ranked fourth in CO2 emission over the last 50 years. And Riau province contributed about uh, uh, pitlands fire uh, occurrences during these 10 years period. The pitlands in Riau covered about 56% the total area in Riau, Riau in Indonesia. Then during the period of 2014 and 2015, Riau experienced serious fire disasters. Hence, the objective of this paper is how we extinguish these pit fires. One of the solutions by the implementation of weather modification technology. Now, we would like to evaluate the effectiveness application of the weather modification technology, increasing the pre precipitation rate for mitigation land fire in Riau. This is very, uh, very uh, prestigious project because it is involved uh, many uh, uh, departments and agencies and a lot of money poured in this project. This is the background. Weather modification technology is type of human effort in order to minimize disaster by of course, this fire pit land fire disaster by enhancing precipitation rates or rain. And as a consequence, we do hope that we will reduce pit land fire disaster. This is the methodology, very uh, straightforward. Uh, <clears throat> currently, the application of weather modification technology has been one of the technical solutions to ease the pit land fire in Indonesia. And the state of the art successful in the implementation of weather modification technology for increasing precipitation rates have been reviewed in several countries such as in USA, Australia, Thailand. However, the evaluation of uh, and uh, uh, the reports related to the implementation of weather modification technology for mitigation and pit fire are limited. So here, very limited publication related to uh, implementation uh, weather modification technology for uh, mitigating pit fire disaster. Thus, our discussion here is very important as this will contribute to the body of knowledge in the area of uh, pit fire risk mitigation and controls. Now, how to do that? Performing cloud seeding utilization for equipment such as cloud seeding using this airplane. Air, air and this is rocket launcher. I will, uh, this, uh, some, uh, I will explain later. Artillery and ground-based generator. Oh, however, this is very expensive. We realize that, but there's no way. Uh, this, uh, the, the, not, uh, there's very limited, very limited uh, options to uh, extinguish uh, uh, pit fire in the world especially in Indonesia. Here, uh, some of a picture when we, uh, together with BPPT, uh, uh, this is the agency uh, that's conduct together with us uh, weather modification technology. Uh, and this is uh, the airplane that we use here. And this is, uh, uh, a particle generator, ground-based particle generator, and how to do that? How to do that? 
the uh, weather modification technology basically is performed by mimicking the cloud development process in the sky throughout the cloud seeding activities. A number of hydro hygroscopic particles size uh, less than 10 microns, for example, sodium chloride was carried by specific airplane. This is airplane, for example, here and this airplane. And the particles are intentionally injected directly into the clouds of rainfall, the clouds and expected to occur. This is, uh, we can drop this uh, on the top of a cloud or below the top, uh, below the clouds. Or here, we can also use ground generator. We release it, uh, we release, uh, uh, this is basically uh, uh, sodium chloride basically is a uh, salt, salt but very, very uh, thin, uh, 10 microns in diameter. And also we can use rocket launcher to uh, bringing uh, the salt itself. And this is we uh, do when we conduct this under the cloud base or the cloud surface within the updraft area because uh, this is basically we use uh, sometimes this uh, when we look at uh, this is the cloud cumulus cloud we need this clouds when we look at this and we go to this cloud uh, however based on my experience and our experience when we uh, try to uh, approach this clouds uh, the airplane will be very, very bumpy and shocking. And even me, uh, I feel not com uh, comfortable when uh, I'm in, uh, I was in the airplane. This, that is the condition. Now, why weather modification technology should be applied? Up to now, there has no well-known technology incapable for extinguishing peatland fires in wide escalation area, except by rainfall, again, by rainfall, which can be tri tri triggered by the uh, uh, application of this weather modification technology. This is why we you can use it. I think uh, because maybe the time is very limited, I will pass it. We use this ultra giant nuclei, for example, natrium chloride, 10 up to uh, basically less than 10 microns. Maybe I make a mistake here, less than 10 microns. Now we try to evaluate the use, uh, the implementation of weather modif modification technology in three, uh, in four areas within uh, Rio province including Indragiri Hilla Regency, Maranti Island, Plawalan, and Sia is in Sia. Why? Because historically, those regions experienced several uh, pit fires in the last few years that caused pit land degradation and hazard disasters. This is why we conduct this research within this area. This is area. This is Indonesia, basically. This is Matra Island. Okay. Now, we look at the data of hotspot using this website and what happened during 2013 up to 2017, there are about 170,000, again, 170,000 uh, hotspots occurred within this area. And in one period, May, May 2014, for example, 4,700 hotspots were detected within this area. Now we try to uh, evaluate the implementation of weather modification technology. In 2014, we conducted, we performed total 144 days and within 144 uh, aircraft, uh, 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 here, sorry, I don't know why my computer is blinking. 
Uh, this is 144 days for uh, weather modification technology uh, we conduct in this area. And in 2015, we have conducted about 152 days. And in 2016, uh, 2016 84 days. And what happened uh, after that? For example, we can see this. Uh, why this is blinking? Okay. Uh, this is a tropical rain measuring mission satellite. We gathered all uh, information related to hotspots from this satellite. Thank you for NASA and JAXA Japan for providing us uh, this data. We appreciate that. This is precipitation rates during 2014, during the season, for example, here. Uh, in January and April, and also June, August, and September, October. During this dry season, we have conducted uh, weather modification technology. Uh, and uh, what happened? Uh, fortunately, during that period, uh, uh, here, we have also may obtain uh, temperature very, very high. Thank you also for Global Forest Watch and also uh, some related uh, organization that provide us some information related to this. For example, uh, during periods of 1st January 2015 and at 2000, uh, during period of 2000, uh, 2015, uh, we uh, if, uh, identified more than 170,000 uh, hotspots has had been uh, occurred in Riau. <clears throat> the implementer of weather modification technology again, uh, 152 days, and uh, again uh, during this period. Uh, we conduct weather modification technology January to March and July to August and uh, September to October. Yeah, this is uh, again some data of hotspots. In 2016, again, we conduct weather modification technology at days and every day, every single day, we uh, spread uh, uh, that salt into the sky. This is some data. And how to calculate the effectiveness implementation of weather modification technology. This is the example. For example, here, uh, if we would like to know, for example, to, uh, to understand, uh, for example, the, effect the effectiveness during period, this period one, 15 up to 13, 31st July, uh, so we have to obtain uh, precipitation rate for 2013, 2014, and 2015. And if we get this information, so we use this uh, calculation. This is uh, the effectiveness of uh, implementation weather modification technology. Uh, we divided this. Uh, the average of the average of this, uh, for example, this, the average of 2016 uh, weather modification technology uh, precipitation rates compared to uh, the average of the precipitation rate during three years period, and we have this result: PGH, PGH. 1.65. Once PGS more than one, that means it's success. Okay, this is how we deal with the evaluation. Okay, this is some uh, present, uh, some results from uh, various uh, regencies here, four agencies, and we can look at this is period of 
uh, the implementation weather modification technology. Some unsuccessful, some success, successful, and some unsuccessful again, and some unsuccessful. And we can look at here, unsuccessful, success, successful, successful. This is in the period for 2014. Uh, this is uh, the result for 2014 for Riau. 70%. The implementation of weather modification consistency, uh, weather permission technology is considered successful. And what happened to uh, 2015? Unfortunately, 2014, 2015, uh, relatively not successful. And 2016, 100% successful. Here, we would like to know why it becomes success or unsuccess. Here, this is the reason. First of all, we would like to emphasize, please, please consider timing for implementation of weather modification technology. technology. Um, excuse me, Professor. So we're going yes. to have <laughs> um, our time. Okay, almost this over. is Thank almost you. finished. This is on a recommendation, please. The success implementation of weather modification technology allegedly determined by the following consideration. First of all, the timing initiating for the implementation of weather modification technology. The success implementation influenced by presence of cloud in the targeted areas. That means don't be late. At the end of a rainy season, please conduct this. Don't start it when the presence of uh, dry season. Timeline, window opportunity. We need this. How long to apply this? Quality of material also. So please uh, consider the quality of materials and weather condition such, such as humidity, wind direction, speed, wind speed, temperature, convection. So that weather and climate control condition will determine the success. Also, we consider La Nina and El Nino. Okay, I think that's all. And here, we use this targeted only method for evaluation of this weather modification technology. My conclusion is the effectiveness application of weather modification technology increase the precipitation rate for mitigation of pitland fire Riau in Riau during 2014-2016, three years period. Then this is considered successful. TGH more than one. However, we should aware that this will be influenced by various meteorological factors such as ENSO phenomenon, MGO, tropical clones, uh, cyclones, low pressure, and top topographic uh, factors. Hence, there was a wide room to improve better understanding for agent enhancing weather modification technology performance since uh, achieving its objective by establishing strong collaboration among academic researchers, weather, weather modification technology practitioners, weather and meteor meteorological experts. Thank you very much for your attention. Dr. Daniel, this is yours. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Pro. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So we have now all the effectiveness of weather um, modification here to curb the pit line fires. Thank you, doctor. And of course, there's some criteria that should be taken into account in mitigating, in mitigating the pit line fire. Some of them are rainy season. We should do it in rainy season. We should take into account um, material quality and also time timeline and set it up. Thank you, Prof. Okay. Well, everyone, we're gonna have our final section here, and I'm sure it's gonna be also interesting for us. For the final panelists, we got uh, Michiko Hosobuchi, PhD. Madam, are you here with us? 
Michiko Hosobuchi. Okay, sorry, sorry. So we're gonna have question and answer section for Professor Ari. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Uh, we're gonna have we're gonna have question and answer, Professor Harry. And so we got one here. All right. Okay, we got so far here. A uh, question from Idra Amri. Yes. All right. Oh, uh, Mr. Idra, um, he raised question here. What consideration to choose in J the salt position, top or bottom, to make pot partitions uh, over right here? Particles. Particles of the cloud. All right. Prof. Harry, the, can you hear the question? What consideration to choose inject the salt position, top or bottom, to make particles of the cloud? Okay, the uh, Peter got, uh, got four questions here, but we focus on the first question first. What yes. consideration to choose inject the salt position, top or bottom, to make particles of the cloud? All right. Yeah, time is yours. And honestly, this is a very tough question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, this uh, weather modification technology, however, we deal it since uh, 30, 40 years ago, but some questions related to, uh, uh, for example, position is very difficult to understand in, in general. But here, uh, we look at, this is uh, basically, this is I, I mentioned about, uh, the release of high glucose peak particles are conducted under the cloud base or on the cloud surface within the updraft up drop area. Mm -hmm. This is uh, sometimes we look at the wind uh, directions, All right. the wind directions. When the updraft area is uh, dominant, so we drop it here in order to make it uh, uh, the, the particles go up. But when we look at the direction goes down here, we drop it uh, on the top of, of uh, the clouds. Here again, uh, that depend on, on the uh, condition. Wind, sometimes again, uh, the dense of, of this cloud, the density of these clouds also. Uh, when we, uh, uh, based on our experi uh, experi uh, experience, uh, when we go uh, like, like snow in the cloth, not only snow, just like a uh, uh, drop of, of ice. When we got here, so we drop it here. When we, when we uh, get that, that drop of ice here, we drop it here. So this is not, not, not easy to, to uh, answer that question because by testing uh, the various, uh, various uh, uh, parameters, maybe that can I uh, answer. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. All right. Um, thank you. Probably we had already got answer from Dr. Harry. Uh, we should take into account the wind direction and also the density of the clock. Some of um, the answer. Okay, uh, next please. Everyone, you may raise question via our chatting room here. Or uh, maybe you, you, you may just um, raise your hand and, and Raise questions.
or you may straight away talk via our Zoom conference here. Oh yeah, here uh, the question also how to optimize calculate the sum of salt to meet yeah, right. all the clouds to produce particle rate. This is again, this the is again salt, right. very <laughs> difficult question <laughs> because normally an aircraft, for example, we use to uh, here small small aircraft. It's mm -hmm. uh, this aircraft on uh, is only able to carry it. Uh, up to two tons uh, salt. So mm -hmm. uh, we only uh, spread up to two tons uh, salt in one period. Okay. However, sometimes uh, when uh, after that, uh, it, within uh, let's say 24 hours, if we look at that, not 24 hours, sometimes uh, because uh, the weather so be checked every mm. i i forgot every, i think in the morning and afternoon okay. once in the after we drop it in the morning let's say 11 o'clock and in the afternoon there's no there is no uh, reaction from the clouds oh. so we drop it again in the afternoon so mm. here uh pa Idral, dr Idral, we cannot uh, uh up, to, up up to now we cannot uh, justify how to optimize calculation of that. Okay. Yes. All right. So the time is quite flexible. <laughs> <laughs> if it's not um, really effective in the morning, we can do it in the afternoon. Okay. Um, I think the others, um, Mr. Steele from Dr. Indra, any consideration, the kinds of cloth to use the soap? <laughs> <laughs> any consideration all right <laughs> basically there are uh, many many materials all right but the uh, one of the uh, not expensive one is uh, that's uh, salt but because of uh, honestly because of of uh, 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 price and also availability of the salt is uh, can be uh, main consideration. All right. Or this where the modification technology application. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So we have finished in these sections from Professor Harry. If I may conclude here, I just want to make a very short conclusions. We should do the weather modification on rainy day, right? And timelining should be taken into account and also material quality, right? And it was, it was interesting here because uh, the success, right? We have, as we have already known from the percentage of the table presented by Professor Harry, 75%, right? The SAC, the success rate, 75%. So it's very effective to curl our pitland fire. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Harry. Thank you, Professor Harry. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Idra and audience. Thanks. So everybody, we go, we're going to the next um, our panelists in this sections. Um, we're going to invite here, hang on, um, Michiko Hosobuchi, PhD. Um, Madam Michiko Hosobuchi. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we we can't hear your voice. Um, Madam Micheko, would you activate your speaker, your audio? Yeah. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we got um. Pretty lady here and friendly <laughs> in this section. I'm going to read a little bit about her personal information and credential. 
Uh, Michiko Subuchi um, is a teaching staff for Center for Southeast Asian Studies. Is that right? Yes. Right. From Kyoto University, a fellow researcher and the Research Institute for Humanity and Nature Collaborative Researcher. Right. And Michiko Subuchi PhD here. Her, her expertise is in sociology and he has already conducted some research in Indonesia, particularly in Aceh, Palembang, Jakarta, Central Java, Sierra Leone, Sunda, oh, quite a lot, <laughs> Bali, <laughs> and Bali since 2004. Wow. So, Michika, you, you are very famous here in Indonesia. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And she's involved in several tropical petroleum projects. Oh, thank you. Thank you. She get involved in combating petroleum fire. She conducted collaborative research with the University of Rio yes. in our Institute for Research and Community Service uh, on community revitalization project. She also collaborated with other experts in meteorology hydrology, soil science, agriculture, economic, and community participation perspectives on community consensus building and community participation. So since April 2020, she's participated in COVID-19 research team with Japan, Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Finland. Oh, international school. Right. In Japan, she also teaches at Kanto Gakuen University. She leads research projects between Indonesia and Japan and actively shares her experience and research results in Indonesia with Japanese students and practitioners. All right. So, uh, Michiko is going to present her paper entitled how can science and technology be returned to local communities as a measure against complex disasters? So we're going to have uh, enough knowledge, right? Information, how science help us, right? To combat our complex disasters here. For another 15 minutes, everyone, please Join me to welcome Michiko Hosobuchi PSD. You got 15 minutes. Time is yours. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your invitation. You're I shared my screen. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for your invitation. Uh, my name is Michiko. Uh, uh, JCR Institute University and all institutions. Uh, today, uh, I would like to talk about compact disaster from uh, Rio District. Uh, my presented title: How can science and technology be returned to lo local communities as a measure against compact disaster? I have written many old drafts directly into the PowerPoint, PowerPoint document. So please share your idea and your suggestion. Karena uh, hari ini saya sengaja menulis kata-kata saya dalam bahasa Inggris di slide saya supaya bisa sharing informasi sama teman-teman yang hadir di sini. Karena saya inginnya mau uh, apa ya, diskusi dari pengalaman saya sendiri dan mau minta tolong nasihat dari peserta semuanya. Yeah, let's get started. The convenient effort of COVID-19 and 90s pandemic and drop, uh, drastic drops in global energy prices have hit Indonesia fossil fuel-based energy sector hard, where the country has been rolling over Setumulo's package. Most of these funds have been drawn, driven toward 
public health and social safety nets. It's uh, meanwhile, its energy sector is receiving tax incentives. The Indonesian government has developing economic measures against COVID-19 while encouraging many participants to implement dealing recovery for the resolution of low carbon society. Currently, it is changing mitigation not only through conservation, rehabilitation, and sustainability that are resourceful with great potential for economic development, but also through veterans. As you all know, peatlands are wetland ecosystems that accumulate dead organic matter when plant litter production outpaces peat de de decay, usually under considerations of frequent or continuous water logging. But peatlands can be a fair century used by several analyzing. First, analyzing it with supply of ecosystem service. Second, analyzing demand and supply of ecosystem service in land use assessment. Third, balancing support and demand in the participatory assessment of pattern use to canal And fourth, using indicator of land use function to link supply and demand. So, the Indonesian government has focused on the, these resources from our stage and has implemented a policy of internal mitigation to patrons and resource development. For decades, large of Indonesian patrons have been converted mainly, mainly into agricultural lands of East crops products and plantation forest area for power production and also. The conversation has both short-term economic gain, such as people living in Pitland area has benefited from Pitland basic business, which have equality contribute to economic development However, it forced major environment and economic risk resulting from health and economic damage due to pit fire, soil subsistence, and flooding, potentially leading to falling on millions of hectares of coastal peatlands in the course of the next decade. The very large CO2 emission from burning and oxygen peat and from the loss of globally significant biodiversity contained in nature, natural peat swap forest. Indonesia, the Indonesian government has a strong committees or commitment to protecting the management peat ecosystem apart from collective action from Previous, uh, previous regulation efforts have also been made at field, field level to restore peat ecosystems through the three hours, dividing the, 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 the vegetation and economic revitalism. For example, as of 2018, the Ministry of Environment of Forest Forest has implemented the restore, restoring of peat ecosystem covered an area of 3.1 million hectares by wetting in both concessional and non-concessional areas. In addition, public place partnership and collaborating project with university has been implemented. A large number of research studies are being conducted 
in this area diary. As a result, it can be explained by an easy interpretation uh, of composition such as a disaster caused by large-scale Piltan development since the 1890s, why, which has caused much trouble for local people. The technology is not only used by the company, but by the community and other companies around the concession. Tropical peatlands have uh, so many risks. Tropical peatlands are not only disasters that can be occur as a result of fire, and it is not the only corona uh, affected with fire, haze, flooding, land subsistence, overseas erosion, absence of native species, crops fail, uh, land, pro land problems, conflict, and poverty also occur in tropical pattern. Our development, management, and utilization of pattern entail not only the risk of natural dis disaster, but also risk of human disaster. It is also important to remember that the patrons are home to human and the wildlife of plants and animals. In recent years, research studies have been conducted on patrons and new develops have started, including climate control, water level monitoring, land subsistence assessment, plant, planting of native species, and in the introduction of new crops. If we only focus on technology and neglect the welfare of people who live in pitlands, we can never manage them sustainability. In addition, not matter how much human effort to exert if prevented natural disaster from occurs, we cannot prevent them from happening. We must not create a structure in which preventive fire or black become to top priority and the residents living or residents' lives develop on it. Monitoring only the dry season and not having major in, pl in place to deal with abnormalities in the face in a recep of disaster. My method, semi-structured interview, participation, observation, and questioning, and so on. My presentation uh, have uh, two concepts. First, complex disaster. When a disaster about the same time or a near time occur. For example, a new disaster occurs and causes more damage. Second, another disaster occurs at the same time during the recovery process and the recovery work must be redone. Or another disaster occurs in defined area and the displaces resources such as a rescue team and relief supply. For example, in Japan, my country, uh, Tohoku disaster is complex disaster. First, earthquake, second, tsunami, and after after that occurred uh, disaster human error disaster, it is nuclear disaster. As a result, complex disaster 
countermeasure cannot be implemented in one place alone. We have to consider cell block type or cell block situation to see or to analyze a uh, topic. Second, the certain society, the certain simulation. It is necessary to analyze each type of disaster and religion where they occur, formulate an ongoing plan and work together with the public and private sector to develop long-term disaster recovery and reconstruction, reconstruction, sorry, reconstruction measure. Each religion should prepare the same disaster management or develop a backup plan to case of simulation or simulation in backlight in nearly or nearby area. For that, we have to build a recently silent society. First, risk assessment. Second, appropriate use of water and land and comprehensive planning. Third, participatory construction and ongoing planning and implementation. So, I focus on Vietnam society from sustainability, sustainable Vietnam managed from local community in Rio. When disaster occur, the only things we can do is reduce the damage caused by the disaster much as possible. It is different with government ministries and university to do this alone, rather the contribution uh, managed on Pietland is protected by local people. This is Kyoto, my institution, and LPPM Rio University, export in the JICA project from October 2017 to March 2020. I investigating whether there is a mechanism from the voluntary protection of patrons by the local people and their living who to be taken care of by the patrons. I expand my research search this is is Tanjun Luban. It is so famous place now. Tanjun Luban village is located on the coastal Brontalis district, Leo, with a population of 558 households and 2,097 people. The village of Tanjun Luban, which was the subject of study, it became a new village in 2004 when it was a um, separate from the nearby village of Spahat. The entire village covers an area of 70 <coughs> hectares, which is unusual large for a single, single village. Excuse me, Michiko, you got three minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, so uh, by uh, we focus on village, its name name, the uh, Bukit Bakti village. Bakti village or settlement is with the village under study and form. Bakti village sub village is located on the coast of Strait in Malacca in beginning of 19th century. Why? We focused this area because in uh, 2010, a large fire broke out this area and 2,100 hectares of land burned down. This is history of fire accident. The sad memory still remains in the mind of some people in the village. Disaster really rebuilt the burning land has motivated the quarter, not only in Rio, but also in many other areas.
this is history. This is land use mapping. And this is land use in 2010. So this area have all prone second forestry and all acacia and grassland, bare land, and also. This is research activity. We have three places. Phase Pratama, first phase, canal blocking. It is point, exa examine dry area based on the needs of residents group. Canal blocking will be applied to the, the, the dry areas. And also we have instrumental monitoring equipment, groundwater and rainforest. It is so important, but this area, the fire is not uh, done. This is so problem have been observed, visualized of data, non visualized data. So we we pass to phase uh, this phase. For example, visualize data, fruit occur every year due to self serving decision by expert from outside the country. There is a lack of communication with, between various experts. What uh, cannot be distributed owing to uh, canal blocking, it has become a project by project basis and end up with only the construction of infrastructure facilities. So we uh, reflection voice in group of exchange opinion, review sharing data system and monitoring system and environment education. So phase two, area management and Peatland Society Development. It is so characteristic project. First, we done automation. the accumulated analysis, calculation, as well as the collection of selection and different data with direct data mining as a result, equipped data planning uh, from several data technicians science data and we monitoring where for canal blocking, spillway and waterway construction by residents. It is point uh, that no experts can understand the problem and be, uh, visualize it is local residents. Local residents or local people have to do to solve this problem. This mapping is made or made by local people. And we're monitoring also several partners, blocking kernel. Uh, and canal underground monitoring as a several partners monitoring uh, then also and regular monitoring on repaired canals among the hydro hydropolitical parameter required in canal network master planning deserves above building deserves and canal and exhaust channel in a and also it can source master than so on. And providing of later rainforest data and discuss of water level projections. And also firefighting with drone. Let's then oriental measure. Cost calculation and schedule will be developed 
not by Kyoto University and FFM Rio University, but also local residents have to discuss. It is there and subsequent agreement. And we called a uh, foreign media. Now, the vegetation, uh, economic, economic revitalization, in many cases, it is characters. The land has deflating after planning, and the cause of deflating why cause, um, based on the result on view, the crops were really selected and planted. Regular monitor, monitoring and reason of government were conducted, and the result of uh, feedback to residents. And also, we made a system of selective crop of different age is also being considered, taking into account the household structure, its residents, family characters, uh, timing of financial requirement. It's a tree banking. And it is a result of plan uh, monitoring planning. It is also, and digitalization also, is, it is uh, example. First, uh, before the project, the uh, residents were local people buy, bought their vegetables, vegetables from nearby city, Dumai. But now they do that. Seeding of native tree and fruit tree planting or degrad peatland also. Land player present. And conclusion has this project been successful? The Tanjung Luban village has not had fire outbreak. In 2008, the 19 and 2020, this is great achievement. This is not because of our effort of us, but because of the co cooperation of the province, district, Nalmos Forestry, the PTBBHA, and residents, local people. Also, there are still many issues to be addressed. It can be said that the development system and our local people to take initiative has been complex. Our project focuses on return to technology to local people. We have to practicalism or our research through the residents. It's immediately. Then we would, would be able to answer questions from residents immediately rather than drawing a consensus at the beginning of project. It is important to follow dialogue process that we draw consensus from people. We also found that there is skill in this process of dialogue. So this dialogue process, we have succeeded in security and labor market for local people, spreading knowledge and bring out skill in local people. The key were quick to action, continued agreement, and the suggestion on strict port, peatland management, which had not prevailed. Uh, Peter, for example, in the case of Peter and Deep's visualizing of Peter at course of mapping on color code. And also, completely different information. Water level information is stored in cloud and current water level and changing, as well as dangerous water level, are uh, displayed in graph. Residents living near the river or pitland can check this information by selecting the observation point from the map information on web screen. The water level information is updated every hour during no normal time and normal time it is a fire or every 10 minutes during a heavy rain. We are planning to compare information, the mo movement, 
achievement of all stakeholders in Rio Province from 2008 to September 2020, and to design a database for sustainable peat land management from the local residents. We also examine indicator in the area climate, water usage, soil, economy, and society, uh, land ownership, private ownership, living food information of population, organization, and also this case study differed with a direct with a large number of acacia and in the uh, industrial forest plantation and more as a result. The key to handling disaster to be prepared and this during normal season. We propose provide training on peat land society version of forestry management or peat land management that taken into account living food. Could you make it? Yeah, I'm so sorry. So oh. pointing, we have to build strategy for peat land management. Mm -hmm. This is point. So have to share, have to share information and quick response and prepare normal time than disaster time. Yeah. Thank you. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michiko. All right, everyone. So we're gonna move to question and answer. So so far we have already got some question here from Dr. Sapri Haldo. All right, okay. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, morning, morning, sir. Morning, morning, morning. How are you? Critical strength faculty. The question is, uh, how are the results of your research? and your recommendation regarding collaboration between government and private sector regarding environmental damage. Uh, do you get the point, Michiko, the questions? Mm. Uh, I repeat once again, how are the results of your research and your recommendation regarding collaboration between the government and private sector regarding environmental damage. Okay, all right. Okay, you, you answer. Question. Thank you, Mr. Daniel. Thank yeah, you. You're welcome, sir. <laughs> yeah, Michiko? Yeah. In my opinion, the government is promoting the three hours, but I think it needs to understand society Mm -hmm. Yeah, society have to understand managing society, uh, managing people and society. All right. Okay. Because discussion is a uh, past process. We have to do step by step uh, each stakeholder. All right. Okay. Sure. Uh, if we may conclude, there should be coordination, right? Right. The effective, effective and intense coordination with government and local people, right? In order this program to be effective. Okay, Dr. Sapri Harda? This is, I think, enough. No problem. This is a uh, short time to form uh, your, your information. No, no problem. This is... Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. And okay, we give chance to the audience, other participants, presenters, would like to raise question for Michiko. Mr. Saiful Bahri. Okay, all right. Okay, Prof. Hello, Prof Saiful. Prof. Saifo? Yes, sir. You may ask question. Prof. Saifo? Prof. Saifo?
Mr. Yes, Mr. Director. Yes. Mr. Daniel. Well, yes, sir. Yeah, you want to ask question now? Why? Okay, thank you. Um, regarding to the uh, University of Riau COA, Center of Excellence, we have um, a topic, a title about uh, ecosystem, peatland, peatland ecosystem and re disaster management. It, it was quite related with the uh, Miss uh, Madam Micheka research about. Could you, um, on the future, engage with the uh, University of Rio regarding to your uh, field of subject because of we have a COA focusing about uh, peatland uh, ecosystem and disaster management, please. Thank you. <laughs> yes, Michiko. Mr. Saipo suggests there should be further right, um, collaborations. Yeah, I'm <laughs> so glad. Right. Okay, so how do you respond to that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad to hear that. I do my best, so please. Okay. Uh, <laughs> because uh, uh, this is my problem in institu my institution. Uh, because many scientists, All right. uh, many scientists joined this project, but science uh, uh, advanced. So human is not here, not there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But uh, my my opinion, the uh, university is not same situation. Okay. So, several, several, uh, <laughs> so I try to do, do my best and I have a, a several uh, sites in there. So not maybe, probably many local people want to join project. Thank you for. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sure, our collaboration will have been answered. So we're gonna be right. Um, Rio University and Miss um, Michiko University is going to have a further collaboration in this field. Because Michiko, um, we are very we have been concerned with a pit line fire. So that's why uh, we do hope that scientists from Rio University <laughs> may get involved can be engaged in this project, right? And we do hope that there's gonna be sustainability <laughs> of our project from your university and our university. Okay. Um, I think we have um, maybe one more question for the audience. Who would like to raise a question for Michiko? You may raise question via our chat room, that's fine. Or you may ask slide away, that's fine. Okay, well, I think we have been at the end of this section, very interesting one. And Michiko had already comprehensively taught us about the problems, right? The use of science, right? To help community in combating this pit lane fire. Uh, it has um, carried out storm phases, face wall and canal blocking, right? Installation of monitoring, um, uh, monitoring <coughs> equipment, right? Material and equipment, sorry. Excuse um, me, Mr. Moderator. Yes. There is uh, one more question in the chat box from okay. Taufik Hendra. All right. Okay, Mr. Hendra. Okay, yes. The handsome guy. Yeah, Mr. Hendra. Yes, mate. You may raise question. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Daniel Shah. Do you yes. hear my voice? 
Yes, sure. Clearly, 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 sir. Yes. Okay, let me introduce myself. Uh, from Madam Michiko, Watashiwa Hendra Des. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, maybe I would like to ask in English. Okay. And how do you find the characteristics of, of the pit soil in Bengkalis, Rio? Because, because this is the, my hometown. All right, okay. Uh, compared to pit uh, land soil in Japan. Oh, and I then okay. I want to follow up what the question, uh, which is uh, Mr. Daniel Shah uh, asked, are there any opportunities for me to continue All right. uh, research? <laughs> maybe, okay. maybe I can uh, propose my uh, PhD proposal to wow, continue okay. in this pit land. Great, great. Okay, thank okay. you, Mr. Daniel Shah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Andra. So, arigato um, gozaimasu. Oh, arigato gozaimasu. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Michiko? <laughs> Thank you for your suggestion. Okay. I try to do my best. And because in Japan, uh, we have a uh, Petran, but not tropical Petran, but in Hokkaido, uh, Petran research is so many, uh, so many items to. Uh, to introduce um, uh, uh, so many items to uh, get uh, okay, useful items okay. for Indonesian society. So All right, okay. So we compared several items and several researches to the university. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, okay. so you do, you, do you mean in you. Bengkalis Leo is more variable that you can get compared to pitland in Japan uh, soil? Okay. So characteristic of Japan soil pitland with Indonesia? Mm. I think I think not same because tropical and not tropical is uh, managing. Uh, so it is uh, a little bit uh, not saying, but uh, I am not sorry, researcher. But my my boss is so researcher. So I uh, try to contact him. So I this. Uh, Okay, maybe later okay. I can I can contact the PSBB in LPPM. Okay, thank you. Arigato sure. gozaimasu, uh, okay. Madam Michiko. Right. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, Mr. Hembra. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have actually cropped our breaking our break time here. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Michiko. Thank you, everyone. So, as a moderator in this section, I'm gonna finish this section. And thanks for raising questions. Thanks for joining this section. And we're going to see you after the break. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Daniel Shah. And also thank you for keynote speakers. Well, that's the end of our keynote speaker session. We will have a break approximately in one hour, start from now until 1 p.m. Western Indonesia time. After this session, we will have parallel, parallel session, I'm sorry, parallel session. And attention to all of the speakers, you will be moved to your specific room based on your paper number. As a gentle reminder, please write your number, your name, your room number, your paper number, or your username. Mohon perhatian kepada para presenter untuk mengubah nama username akun menjadi nama, nomor telefon, dan nomor paper. Thank you for all of the keynote speakers' participation, and also, ladies and gentlemen, see you at 1 p.m for the parallelization. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.
Attention to all of the presenters, please do not leave our conference right now because we will have a parallel session at 1 p.m. Western Indonesian time. Please stay tuned on this conference. Thank you. Kepada semua presenter, dimohon untuk tidak meninggalkan konferensi ini karena kita akan mengadakan sesi paralel pada jam 1 siang waktu Indonesia Barat. Terima kasih.
Sembah besarang di buku bulu. Saya ring salam dengan sembah. Sembah kami jalan sepuluh. Ambil segenggam batang jeran. Dibuat nak
हेलो हेलो रोमी
Baru kok belum orang.
Iya, cuman itu lah surat itu tuh yang yang apa maunya ke OJK, tutulnya mau apa nya ya kan?
Bapak Ibu mohon maaf bagi yang masih belum masuk room silakan chat atau ubah namanya dengan nomor dengan nomor room yang Anda ingin masuk. Sekali lagi silakan chat kepada saya nomor room yang Anda ingin masuk agar dapat saya masukkan ke room yang dimaksud. Terima kasih. Bagi peserta ataupun ya, audiens yang belum mendapat room, silakan untuk memilih room mana yang ingin dimasuki, maka akan dipindahkan. Sekali lagi, silakan pilih room mana yang ingin Anda masuki. Terima kasih.
Bapak Ibu yang mungkin sudah menuliskan nomor room tapi belum bisa masuk ke room silakan mungkin keluar dulu dari meeting ini kemudian join lagi. Keluar dari meeting ini kemudian join lagi. Terima kasih. Sik, any committee here? Committee? Excuse me? Can take me to the room 6? No problem to place you uh, on your room meeting. I'm sorry? I have an unstable uh, connection, so... Can uh, take me again to the room six. Connection. Yeah. I think there's problem with your connection. Yeah, that's. We can place um, you on your room. Um, your room. Sorry. I'm in room six. Uh. Uh. uh which before? Uh, which one to join uh, on the meeting with the other account? With the other account. Please register first with the other account or email, and then you join uh, in Zoom meeting. Okay. We'll help you to place you on your room. Uh, I get up first and change my account.
uh, monitoring uh, at smartphone. Uh, and they start uh, testing, uh, compare instrument reading, um, then sensor reading. There are uh, mean error 0 0.4686. Uh, five degrees Celsius for temperature reading and uh, two point six seven percent for humidity readings. Um, and then the system turn on the lamp to reduce humidity above, yeah, uh, and turn on the blower or sprayer to reduce the temperature when it above uh, six. 9 derajat Celsius. Okay, our conclusion, the smart compound system prototype based on Western and IoT is functionally running well. The actuator can automatically control kumbung at temperature and humidity. This error, mean mean error for temperature and humidity, it is still in the working area of the DHT22 sensor based on the data set. The temperature and humidity of fresh kumbung can be measured in real time in your smartphone. Okay, thanks uh, for attention. Uh, thank you for your very nice presentation today. I think your research is very interesting and very useful, especially for the research area of sensor system. Okay, we invite all participants if you have some question, please. Yes. Okay, time is yours, Riri, please. I want to ask you whether using VSN in the possibility of the mushroom to be infected. Yeah, we use VSN. Uh, X. Uh, it can show how mul how multi ethnic uh, vibes in the Kampung Islam Kepawan settlement, and then the celebration of Maulid, the birth of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The celebration of Maulid is a tradition that is carried out every year by the people of Kampung Islam Kepawan settlement with great fanfare. The celebration of Maulid in Kampung Islam Kepawan settlement indirectly indirectly shows a very thick culture acculturation such as the Bleganjur dance and Hindu deer dating with East Gamelan, Chinese lion dance performance, and also the rodent art that is, that is to be the characteristic of this settlement. This, the celebration of Maulid, a lot of activity is carried out in the Kampung Islam Kepang settlement such as the Aruf period procession or eight tower period to surround the settlement, Mesir Kumshishan, three or seven months of pregnancy celebration, Kisasul Andia, secular zikir, magibung, and also um, religion lectures or great public. This is some activity uh, on the celebration of Maulid. And then the last, the last aspect uh, from non-physical aspect on the, on, in the Kampung Islam Kepawan is basic values of life. The plurality found in the Kampung Islam Kepawan settlement can be interpreted wisely between the local community and also the surrounding community. The basic values of life in the Kampung Islam Kepawan settlement community are based on Islamic lesson, which is sourced from the Quran or the Bible and also the Hadiths. In addition, the Kampung Islam Kepawan settlement community also applies the concept of Nyam Braya as a form of tolerance among religious communities by, by upholding the sense of brotherhood among the surrounding communities that are religious. Harmony between religious community in the Kampung Islam Kepawan settlement was formed very well so that there was never a religious conflict even though it was filled with diversity in their life. So Islamic values provide a very big influence in every aspect of the life in the Kampung Islam Kepawan settlement, such as the physical aspect of settlement, economic aspect, social cultural aspect, and any question for the presenter? No. Oh. 
Okay, I think it's enough. Thank you very much. Uh, we give um, applause for Pak Irawan. Then now let continue. Let, let we continue to the next presenter is Papa Asmadi Muhammad Nur from Universitas Rio. Uh, this time is yours, Pak Asmadi. Okay. Thank you, yeah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good, af good afternoon, all ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, I would like to share my screen. Okay. Okay, then when I share. Share. Huh? Yeah, come. Come here, Okay, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My topic uh, research content analysis and development of E module reaction rate in school chemistry. Uh, the introduction. Eh? Uh, actually, this, uh, this is a part of my supervisory thesis. Yeah? Uh, we combine uh, our research. Yeah? This is the preliminary research. Uh, most of students in senior high school yeah, is uh, difficulty in to understand the uh, chemistry concept. Preparation process consists uh, of the government, non-government or private and community element uh, like the fishermen and minor group. All three are interconnected. There are for uh, this arrangement of marine space also has its dimension of very complete uh, challenges. Okay, we can. Uh, okay, can you show, show, show. okay. The sea and coastal area of Bangka Belitung have fisheries, resource, and also contain mineral reserves that uh, are technically and economically potential to be mined. Securing access to control is an absolute interest that must be achieved by user. Uh, access to utilis utilization is claimed as the right of its community and a citizen. Therefore, the government or state as the holder of control of power is also requested to be fair in... Seven, um, we can see the specific speed of substrate consumption and we can, um, we could find um, that simulation to obtain the highest consumption rate being 0 0.11 grams over liter per hour um, using a biomass volumetric productivity being 0 0.0375 um, grams over liter per hour. And also we, can, we could find a direct relationship between a specific speed of substrate consumption and um, biomass volumetric productivity. And this is so true because when Saccharomyces cerevisiae um, grow up, use deep substrate of this glucose, in this case, for um, growth, for maintain her, uh, for generate product, and maintain, maintain her metabolic pathways. So, um, uh, inside the room, yeah? Yeah, but the problem, mm -hmm. he is not available. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe I will call again uh, Mrs. Rini. Rini, I don't think she's here. Nope. Can co-host help me to find the pre uh, presenter? It's hard for me while talking and then I have to scroll up and down who is the present. Uh, or 
Mr. Uray? No? Okay. Mr. M. Yasser, he's here, but I don't know where is he now. Okay, the next one, uh, Miss, uh, Mr. Muhammad Al Murdani. Mr. Muhammad Al Murdani? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Uh, maybe you can start your presentation. Okay, sir. Yeah, thank you. Uh, 328 work on the DC electric motor and AC alternating current electric motor or just direct current electric motor. Thank you. Yes, sir. Nggak dengar. Uh, is it your microcontroller at mega 228 work on DC yeah. motor? Yes. Or AC motor, alternating current motor, or both of them? Yes. Every day with adjective benefit of learning as expect and needed student. In the learning motivation increases. This motivation, motivation and activity students. Okay. Conclusion based data analysis, uh, constructivism based STEM efforts is effective in increasing motivation and learning activity of recycling waste into his spirit on biotechnology material in extracurricular activity of SMP Purnama Pekanbaru. This study found that they are luck in information to make valid conclusion. The step in an indicator of critical thinking. One identify to define the third enumerate, the fourth analyze the fifth list and the sixth correct student critical thinking skills can be improved by applying learning methods that require students to be more active during the learning activities the method that can be used to improve student critical thinking skills is to use the problem-based learning model aren't in room at all then states that pbl is learning that has the essence of presenting a variety of authentic and meaningful problems to students. CBL is a learning model. ...of the poetry text of PhD students, uh, and then identifying the inner structure of PhD student poems that continues to interpret the inner structure of the poems, uh, and uh, analyzing in accordance with the theory used in this research is to use four elements of the inner structure of poem from Herman Giolio, namely theme, tone, feeling, and mandate. Okay, uh, research and discussion. Uh, poem, this, poem in this research uh, amounted by two thirty-six poems written by PGSD student. Uh, the result of the identification of the inner structure of poem uh, by PGSD student are outlined in the following table. Uh, here, we present the, the identification of uh, 36 uh, poems, but uh, we will not read them. Uh, Improve matching cube algorithm and then the aiming to find the best 3D image reconstruction with performance criteria 
surface volume, surface area, and visual shape comparison between infasilis and project output. Okay, this is the multi slice. What is different multi slice and single slice? If we see the inside of the CT scan, we can see the X ray beam in here. In the single slice, No? Nobody? All right. Um, by the way, I would like to ask the questions on this matter, uh, Lukman Hakim. How long was the research uh, uh, taken place? Two months. Two months. Two months. Oh, two okay. Months. Okay. Produced biodiesel using palm fatty acid distillate. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, you have about one minute for your conclusion. Okay, sorry. Okay, uh, for conclusion, okay. Uh, in this uh, result, we get that the best, the best result is when we use a chopper to impregnate to uh, impact chopper to hydroxyapatite is a good result when you use the chopper is three three percent and then uh, we have uh, the yield for the result is 60 63 percent and then result is succeed to utilizing calcium deficient hydroxyapatite synthesis for excel waste and calcium with cell and then mm, then we can produce uh, biodiesel using palm fatty acid distillate you see uh, with the catalyst hydroxy appetite chopper uh, thank you very much for the time uh, i'm so sorry i cannot <laughs> display my my powerpoint thank you ma'am yes uh, that's okay thank you ibu sri moria um yes so that seems to be a problem with many of us uh, but anyway uh anyone wants to ask questions please you can um write in the chat or you can uh, just uh, open your mute and raise your hand or use the raise hand uh, signal. Anyone wants to ask questions? We still have three minutes for questions and answers. No questions? No questions one, no questions two. In the meantime, I would like uh, to ask if um, Pak Randy is is he already uh, available? Uh, he had problems with his mic. He will re be replacing Ibrahim. Is Pak Randy already okay? Okay, no response yet. Okay. Uh, so the next, actually, um, I see here, uh, Dr. Salomo, uh, Pak Salomo Sinulinga. Pak Salomo, I have um, here from the committee. Uh, you will be replaced by Pak Erwin Amirudin, is that correct? And you asked for the sixth presentation. Pak Salomo, you can open your mic. Ya, Bu. Ya. Uh, tadi panitia mengatakan Pak Salomo diganti oleh Pak Erwin apa betul? Ada catatan dari panitia. Betul, betul. Tadi Pak Erwinnya sedang di rumah. Pak jadi, Erwinnya lagi seminar di rumah, Bu. Oh, Kami jadi di, uh, di, di dua, Bu. Jadi Pak Salomo nanti jadi yang uh, Presentasi terakhir ya Pak. Iya. 
Oh, Oke, okay. ya. Terima Pak kasih. Erwin, ya. Ya. ya, Pak Erwin nanti hadir di sini, ya. Pak Salomo. Ya. Ya. Uh, tapi ya. belum datang. Belum, dia masih di room 6. Oke, okay, oke. Okay. Ya. Uh, dengan demikian saya uh, lanjutkan. Uh, silakan di mute kembali, Pak Salomo. Jadi uh, pembicara the next presenter will be Ibu Desi Heltina. Ibu Desi, ya, yeah, I see you're here. Yes. Are you ready, Ibu Desi? Uh, yes, Dr. Desi Heltina. Yes. Okay. Uh, Prof Titania, I'm sorry. Uh, the our paper, uh, the presentation our paper, uh, uh, we uh, uh, the our presentation is uh, Fadila Ulfa. Fadila. Fadila Ulfa, go on. Uh -huh. uh, yes, Miss, I'm the presenter for our paper. Oh, oke, okay. yes. Uh, and you will also, oh, oke, okay, so Fadila Ulfa will be presenting Dr. Desi Heltina's paper, correct? Oke, okay. yes. Uh, so, I would like uh, Fadila Ulfa to, uh, I invite Fadila Ulfa to present the paper, performance of Tania ya. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> yes, me. Performance of me. <laughs> Tania. So, um, Please uh, give your presentation. You have 10 minutes. You can put on your uh, video or a presentation PowerPoint. Okay, Miss. Yes. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Uh, I'm in being a honor for me for join this conference. Uh, now uh, I'm the I'm Fadila.
Habis coba keluar dulu, nanti baru dimasuk lagi biar suara mikrofonnya aktif kembali. Bu Zulfirna masih ini Bu, Bu Zulfirna masih mau tahu udah selesai sesinya Ibu. Eh, enggak tadi Bu Apis tadi keluar dia nggak bisa masuk. Oh gitu, Bu Apis nomor berapa? Keluar suaranya. Jadi keluar benar dulu, Pis. Lift semuanya, nanti masuk lagi. Saya bisa tol masuk ke room 4, Pak. Bu Zulfarina mau masuk lagi atau tidak, Bu? Belum, belum masuk ke 4. Tapi dimasukin ke 4 ya, Bu, ya? Halo, halo,
हेलो 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 कैन यू सी माय पीपीटी हेलो 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 Kita Bukan karena kita living karena memang belum sesi kita juga. Oh gitu ya? Eh, iya kan pada. Gak boleh kita jadi peserta. Ah itulah dia Cuma tuh. Pukar-pukar Mila nama Mila. Jadi angka di depannya. Rename ya. Nama Mila belakangnya. Bisa kan rename? Bisa. Tahan di video Mila. Nomor Mila. Itu nama Mila tuh. Alip tuh. Ini. Oh ya. Klik kanan. Eh nggak ada yang klik klik kanan. Di sini klik apa ya? Nggak gini tadi Mela cerain loh. Tahan ini. Nggak bisa. Apa-apa tuh beda yang tak. Ini, ini aja. Nggak ada di sini. Nggak ada kan? Mela. Iya maksudnya nggak. Nggak ada. Ini sudah tegak. Mungkin mulai sebelumnya. Nggak ada. Nggak ada. Nggak ada.
Hello. Yes, Hello, sir. the committee. Yes. Uh, could you please connect me to the room 12, please? Uh, I'm sorry, sir. I can't find your account in uh, breakout rooms. Uh, yeah, because I'm not actually supposed to be there, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to replace uh, Mr. Salomo Sinuraya, the last one, the presenter for the last one. Let me to see first. Bye. Which which one room uh, you joined before? Before is six. Six. Yeah, this is Mr. Lazuardi. Okay. Before it was six. Okay. Now you I'm going to, join... to uh, room twelve. Twelve. Yes, please. Mana apa kamu? Mr. Ewin Amirudin. Yes. Uh, uh, we suggest you to rejoin uh, to this meeting. We have problem to uh, move you to the other room. Oh, because you know, Mr. Salomo, he asked me to uh, present his uh, paper. But then me in that article as a. Uh, I see, but uh, maybe there's a problem with, with uh, your account. Oh, uh, my please, account. Yeah, please in sign out or uh, left from from this meeting and then uh, rejoin. Oh yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. What's the question? This. Kata kata didawa. Halo, komite. Ini room tiga ya? Ini room? Stay away. Mr. Juandi, have you faced with your uh, anyway, with your present, uh, present part, uh, please, Jason? We, we say thank
Pak Juandi apa sudah selesai di uh, di ruang meetingnya? Pak di room 4 ya? Sudah selesai, Pak. Internet saya rusak nih. Oh, begitu. Internet. Ya, mau masuk ya. lagi ke ruang 4 bisa? Eh, uh, sebentar. Ini karena sudah tidak terdeteksi lagi. Mohon izin, nah. Pak. Bapak ini dulu keluar dulu dari Zoom, live meeting dulu, lalu join lagi, Pak. Nanti bisa okay. lagi, Pak. Ya, ya, Hai, Pak. Makanya.
izin Bu, saya terlempar tadi dari Zoom di room 1. Izin Bu, saya di room 1 terlempar tadi dari Zoom.
of 69.6% uh, uh, lead concentration on the NFB uh, broad with supplement 600 uh, ppm and the control was reduced only 8.55% uh, the mechanism of resistance may be based on the metal conservation of area of cell intracellular conversion into less toxic form on the release of metal from a cell with the help of polymers and degradation the permeability of cell the membrane. The study was a possibility of tolerance for resistant bacteria various. The amount of lead reduction in influence by the strain bacteria varies concentration PB or the lead incubation time and the tip medium they use. My conclusion NR18 and NR28 bacteria 
a potential tour of the community today. <coughs> The methods used are laboratory test and field test and the strength and durability of six types of fast growing wood. Strength test is carried out by main of pressure strength testing based on SNE, ISO. Bagaimana kira-kira antisipasinya itu? Oke. Uh, terima kasih Pak Lazodi. Ini yang saya tangkap ya putus-putus. Uh, kalau kaitan, kalau kaitannya dengan apa, uh, dengan uh, apa namanya, dengan bencana alam yang terjadi di dua provinsi ini, Riau dengan uh, Sumatera Barat, itu memang ada sudah apa ya, uh, sudah ada program-program yang diberikan oleh uh, oleh WWF ini beberapa kali ya seperti yang saya sampaikan di slide ini sebentar saya buka slide-nya ini Pak ini slide-nya mungkin sebesarkan ini Pak programnya uh, under a microscope result and discussion uh, based on the isolation it was found that the internal pathogenic fungi Uh, Bavaria bastiana came from the resulting soil of oil palm, rice, and chili plant, which were catarized by insulates, IP, branch, uh, and hyalin color, conidiopores, uh, where hyalin, not insulated, and unbreached, uh, and conidiaron, and cluster in hipa. The conidia and conidiopore. the sample so this is the uh, absorbent of the heavy metal the dark one for the copper and the gray for the PB so for the CO we have a uh, uh, plate flat uh, absorption because of the radius of the uh, copper is bigger than the uh, pore in the activated. Conclusion is uh, the internet gives application for Kota Baru village uh, was developed according to the user needs. Uh, application provides information need by tourists uh, regarding the big house and other tourism supporting object. Uh, the waterfall method was used in the application development. Programmed using PHP and JavaScript. PostgreSQL and extension PostGIS was the database used. Uh, and this application has been used to promote tourism at a thousand big house area in Koto Baru village. Okay, thank okay. you. All right. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. It's quite interesting. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Abhis. So, GIS application. Yes. Why? GIS. It seems very effective for tourism to know to get yes. inside there. You, 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 you call it big house? Are you, yes. Do you mean rumah gadang here? Yeah, big house. Rumah gadang. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> one question only for one or two minutes for Hafiz. Any questions? For Hafiz? Yes. Sorry. Yes. My name is Bima from Diponegoro University. Yeah, sure. Yes, sure. Right. right. Yeah, it's quite interesting, I think, uh, the use of uh, internet use application. Yeah, uh, yeah. Could you please uh, tell me, tell us about the, the, the real implication of this? Nampak Bu Intan dong, nampak Bu Intan tadi tuh. Eh, nomor handphone yeah. Intan belum dimasukin. Oh iya 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 iya. Iya tuh belum. Ya. Yeah. Yang dari Cina tuh ngasih juga. Iya. Yeah. Ami ami ami. Yeah. Yang jelas kami gongsi Pak Chai. Gongsi gongsi. Kasih ampau kasih ampau. Kasih ampau. Transfer aja angpaunya nggak apa-apa. Iya. Boleh. Nanti <laughs> menjadi Purwokerto kita ke Cina bareng-bareng. Eh, boleh, Bu. Boleh, Bu. Oh iya, saya lupa iya. sih teman saya itu. Salam sama Pak Ahmad, Bu ya. Dari Purwokerto-nya di mana gitu? Kenapa Pak Mahmud? Salam sama Pak Ahmad di Purwokerto. Oh, siap. Sekian tadi sekian ya kan? Udah ini nomornya siapa aja yang belum kan juga Nanti kita kirim sama Bu Neni juga. <laughs> Di situ enggak ada mendoan kan ya di Riau ya? Oh banyak, Bu. Oh banyak. <laughs> iya. Berarti nanti kalau ke Purwokerto tuh enggak jadi mendoan ini. Eh cari yang lain, Bu. Apa? Getuk eh, beda, ya? Pak, beda. Nah, ya. Getuk ya, getuk goreng ada, ya. Ada ada ya. Di sana mendoannya gratis, Bu Inta. <laughs> Bu Suci yang bayarin dia. Nah, di sini kita beli masalahnya. Pak di sini kue kue apanya ada di Riau nih Bu? Apa? Kue yang bisa hidup kembali. Apa itu? Kue bangkit. Ya Allah. Tuh kue bangkit itu khas nanti Pak Tommy kalau ke Pekanbaru atau ke Riau ada namanya kue bangkit. Itu kue yang dipanggang. Jadi kangen Bu. Indo ini aduh. Ah itu dia. Pulang, Pak, itu bi biasanya Bu Eva sama Bu Intan itu bisa buatnya tuh Bu uh, Pak. Bu Intan pintar bikin kue Pak. Bisa pintar kue ya. Jadi bisa lah ya. itu dah. Udah Jadi, siap mungkin ya. Iya udah siap, siap dia. Intan sudah siap lahir dan batin kayaknya. <laughs> Pak Tommy siap-siap aja. <laughs> Oke okay, Bu Emilin, see you next time. Okay, bye. Goodbye. Oke okay, Pak Tommy. Bye. Suci, Intan, Bu Eva, Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Live ya, kita live bareng-bareng. Live birik. So, Mr. Iham Ziahura, are you here? Still praying, Pak Abdal. Still praying. So, so we are continue to the next. Eh? I have praying. I pray. Oh, already. you already? Already done. Already. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, we wait or we continue the other uh, presenter? Maybe we, we, we go on to the next. Okay. Okay, now we are continue to the Arif Rahman Wahid? Yes. Are you still here? Yep. Okay. Now we are invite the Ari, Mr. Arif Rahman Wahid. And detail more than just a material perfection preserve human environment relationship 
in traditional brick making scenarios scenarios so the mr arif rahman wahid time is yours okay thank you very much uh, i remind people our time is 10 minutes for the presentation yep. and five minutes for question and answer okay thank you okay okay uh thank you very much C could you see my screen here yeah yeah okay so uh thank you for the opportunity to present this paper in the conference so uh, the paper called uh, more than just a material perfection anyway i'm arif from department of architecture uh, university of indonesia uh, again the paper called more than just a material perfection preserve stories in traditional brick making scenario so uh first thing first why the traditional brick making uh, is, Im is important here to be discussed. So uh, as we know, clay bricks are one of the oldest and most used technologies in architecture that is still used and developed until now. However, in the recent discussion, the development of them uh, is more focuses on the materiality of it, like the material properties of the bricks, like how to mix new additive, uh, how it can be reused or how strong is the material. And then the popularity of this building material also push, uh, pushes the material industry that promotes precision, faster and bigger production, and also uniform, uniformity, granting a perfect product for building. Anyway, while it promises more and more products like uh, the picture that I shown here, the modern industry hurts local traditional practices that produce brick in a smaller scale and embedded with the cultural values of the region. So for example, this is like one of the traditional uh, practice. As a material, um, the bricks contain the imperfection of hand of the maker uh, and the variations in the ingredients that are the enemies of industrialized perfection. Um, it implies the importance of traditional brick making practice regarding its materiality, uh, which is the value beyond its physical properties only, um, is important to be discussed here. The diverse way of practicing brick making and the past knowledge through generation are a few of the added value of this practice. It appreciates the existence of the maker and culture as part of the whole bricks trail from uh, earth into a built construction. In this aspect, this traditional practice uh, kind of exceeding the modern industry. So this is the context of uh, our study. These are three workshops uh, that were chosen because they have distinct characteristics of the environment. The first one, the workshop in Walahan, Jepara, is located in a big area next to a paddy field. The terrain there is relatively flat and open, hence the exposure to the sunlight. Uh, the second one, uh, which located in Songgom, Brebes, the, the area is situated at the riverside, which can be distinguished as a two-level narrow flat plain. And then the last one, uh, the brick workshop in Lembah Rantau, Tanjung Pinang, Riau, is located in a scar plan where most of the brick making scenario happen in the lower end of the slope. So uh, the data are gathered mainly through field observation and interview with the brick makers. And then to capture the reality of the workshop, we create photographs and visual notes to document the brick making process from earth into the finished brick. We look closely at the craftsman choice of action in the forming phase, start from mixing the ingredients to any last process before drying phase. It is intended to investigate the different steps in the forming phase between three workshops and highlight the intertwine between craftsmen, uh, material and their environment in the forming phase. So I think it is quite clear uh, that my intention here or our intention here is to shift the discussion from material properties of the brick 
into its materiality of or, or something beyond the physical uh, properties of it. Um, there are three main elements in traditional brick making process um, that should be uh, discussed regarding the materiality of the bricks. The first one is the craftsman itself, because brick is a cultural product which has this, an involvement of people who works on making the brick with their skillful hand and tools so we can see the maker of the brick as a craftsman. And then the second one, although I, I talk about the, the materiality of the bricks, uh, we should still uh, uh, see the raw material itself, the, the, the soil. And then the third one is the environment. So uh, based on data, with his relational ontology, um, he suggests that land is not fixed, the environment is not fixed as it can influence the action of people and has the same standing with people who lives on it. It means that the environment also growing with and around the people around it. It becomes uh, an inseparable context of the makers in the production setting. Um, <clears throat> sorry, but then the importance of the craftsman, raw materials and the environment in brick production is not within themselves. Instead, it is the confluence of them that poured into a process of brick making. This confluence, this uh, unity of those three aspects produce a variety of bricks uh, according to the local practices that cannot be achieved in a regulated uh, modern industry. They become scenarios, which is the possibilities of many sequences of action. Um, generally, the sequence in the brick making process involves extracting the raw soil from the earth and then forming the clay. And after that, drying the raw bricks uh, before finally firing the bricks to achieve the, the finished products. Um, this paper focus on the, focuses on the forming phase of the process, whereby the craftsmen have more control in altering the bricks clay. Uh, this is where they have the like a, a close contact to the material itself. And as we can see from the diagram here, in Wolahan, the first uh, location, after they after the maker mix the ingredients, um, they mold it quite far from the mixing uh, area, and then they scrap the surface to make it soft. And after that, they they mark the the raw clay with two diagonal lines, uh, which we will talk about later. And then while in, in Songgom, they, after they mold the bricks, um, they move it to the drying area and then just turn the mold upside down to, to achieve the, like the, the, uh, the finish, not the finished product, but the raw clay, which sh should be dried after that while in uh, Lembah Rantau in Tanjung Pinang, they like they mix the ingredients and then they mold it uh, at the same area and then they cut it, the bridge, they, they cut the brick sausage uh, just next to it and then they move it quite far to the drying area. So there, there's quite a vari variations here. Um, so we found uh, three main stories that should be preserved from uh, traditional brick making uh, workshop. The first one is the stories of identity. Um, local identity of the brick is created through the manipulation of raw brick surface by the craftsman with the influence of the environment in the forming phase. The interplay of the makers and their environments with the brick show craft craftsmanship as it does. Uh, the image here highlights two diagonal lines carved on the clay bricks in uh, Wolahan, Jepara. Uh, the, the, the image uh, on the left side. The makers claim that he wants to pay respect to his land, to make, to make it the trademark of his region's brick. It also indicates the maker's intention to see brick uh, as an architectural surface visible to the end user in any appropriate way. Uh, the second one, the, the image on the right side, 
is how the the break workshop in Tanjung Pinang um, show this particular practice that passed through uh, generations. So based on our interview there, uh, the owner of the workshop is like the the son of the original uh, uh, break workshop owner. And then they preserve this uh, uh, specific way of producing bricks somehow. The second story is, is the stories of the tools, uh, where uh, there's two instances here. The first one, the craftswoman in Songom uh, on the left side, uses a wooden dough base to mold the clay into a raw brick. When the clay fills the mold, she even the surface and moves to the drying area. There, the wooden base is turned upside down, uh, generate two battery smooth upper surface of the raw bricks without the need to scrape the brick surface. Um, but this kind of tool also has some kind of uh, disadvantage where the bottom part of the brick will have a slightly concave surface because of the hand movement. And then the right one, the, the one in Tanjung Pinang as well, um, they use this mechanical machine to reduce the time needed to soften the surface of the brick. Um, and at the same time, produce more bricks in one mold. So with this kind of mechanical egg cutter-like uh, die, the bricks are sliced into smaller brick size pieces and moved to the cart to be dried for uh, 48 hours. This machine produces smoother and um, more identical brick surface, but the, uh, the imperfection of the material arises in ways produced by such mechanism. So uh, yeah, basically the stories of the tools are talk about the specific techniques with their tools uh, in achieving the material imperfection and then uh, how the tools can be used to cut down the forming steps. And then the last insights uh, that we found is the stories about how they concern uh, on their context. So basically because um, in making the brick, we would take something from the, from the earth. So in return, we should adapt or we should give something back to the earth. Um, therefore, the intertwine between craftsmen, materials and the environments, um, yeah, uh, uh, um, in, uh, it informs how the craftsmen ultimately respect the working land as part of our restriction of the making process. Um, for example, the, the upper left uh, image there, um, it shows the flat but narrow ground in Songom uh, that forces the craftsmen to work with a little cart so they can move the soil from one point to another efficiently. While in Wolahan, um, the upper right side image, um, the vast flat ground makes it possible to form the brick by molding it on the drying area directly. But then um, the open space also makes the brick maker uh, make a portable shield to protect him from the intense ray of the sun. Uh, yet it, it still support his mobility. And then the, the last image, the uh, bottom right side, the workshop in Lembarantau with its steep terrain use a funnel to deliver the ingredients from the higher ground. So this picture really shows how the brick maker waiting for the uh, dough come from the, the upper level. In conclusion, um, local brick making practices with their specific cultural values could transform the four phases of brick making into multiple possibilities of action in the form of scenarios. A single change in the craftsmanship could produce a different kind of bricks, even if they have similar ingredient, ingredients or context. Um, the existence of local identity of the craftsmen and their environments are manifested in the brick, preserve the stories of how it made, what kind of tools are used and what adjustments are made regarding the condition of the land. The stories of our cultural values that reflected in brick making scenarios should be celebrated without uh, nullifying the modern industry. Small scale traditional workshops around Indonesia needs to be maintained as they have meaning beyond just a material perfection. 
uh, yeah, this is just the reference, and that's it. Thank you very much. Okay, okay, thank you, Mr. Arif Rahman Wahid. So now we are going to the uh, question and answer session. So please welcome if any question for the Arif Rahman. No question? Mr. Arif Rahman, yes. it is the brick, the, the trust traditional brick, right? Yeah. So what the point is? Uh, so actually, uh, the point of this uh, study is to show that, uh, again, without nullifying the modern uh, standardized uh, practice, like I will show you this uh, image. So yeah, this is like the example of the modernized uh, standardized practice where we can have uh, a lot of amount, a lot of amount of breaks uh, within such a uh, 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 short time, and then more uniform breaks. Uh, uh, and you can even use a robot to to make all the breaks, but then it lose uh, the the imper the imperfection of the traditional break making scenario. Um, so as I, I told you uh, in my conclusion, this is to celebrate the traditionality, the materiality of the brick, instead mm -hmm. of uh, just look uh, at the brick as a building material itself. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. we should look at it as a product of craft, um, mm -hmm. as something that is made with heart, uh, you know, that kind of stories that, that can be, uh, Celebrate it. I mean, we, we as a, as an Indonesian, we we're really proud of our culture, right? So then, this study uh, is points out the, yeah, the importance of celebrating that kind of uh, value. Oh, I see. So this uh, for cultural, eh? yeah, cultures, um, art and cultures. So maybe if we are to uh, looking others materials to feel fill in in these uh, bricks like maybe sometime the the lighting so lighting i mean this uh, more more not heavier not heavier we we eat something material like uh, uh, busa we call it this busa yeah? mm -hmm. like this or maybe something else so make the brick uh, more lighting than others than uh, existing now or oh, maybe we have this uh, in the Riau province. Uh, we have any uh, pulp and paper mills. Mm -hmm. Any the um, we call it this uh, fly ash, you know. We have the produce uh, fly ash as the side product of the uh, pulp mill. Fly ash is uh, so uh, lighter than the existing uh, brick. Maybe we we fill in this in the mixing maybe we get the more more like yeah? more like maybe better for the uh, uh, build the tall building yeah. because the ring on the light like lighting yeah? later mm -hmm. maybe maybe we need to to to, uh, to treat this for like us to be a brick maybe need something mixing okay any other question, please? If no question, we uh, give applause to the Mr. Arif Rahman Wahid. And thank you very much. So now we are going to the next uh, presentation. We invite any Safitri entitled Financial Management of Village Fund in Rio Province, Indonesia. So uh any sabitri time is yours yes thank you need to remember uh, 10 minutes for the presentation and five minutes to question and answer okay please yes that minute Uh, okay.
Okay. Uh, thank you very much uh, for giving me a chance to presenting my paper about uh, about financial management of village fund in Rio province. Uh, introduction. Abuse of authority in financial management is not only found in business, but also in the village administration. The phenomenon of misuse of village funds causes anxiety for the community and the government in general. This phenomenon occurs, for example, in several sub-districts in Bengali's Regency. Several problems are being addressed by the Bengali state prosecutors. The criminal case for allocating village fund occur in 2012 in North Rupat district involving the chief of village and the treasurer of Tanjung Punak village. This case caused state laws by Ismail and Widodo. Another case also occur in Kampar Gensi, the use of Tanjung village fund allocation in Koto Kampar district can be seen that the amount of Tanjung village fund has been used for development and other costs. However, there are still operational costs that should not be spent for such official operational equipment, such as chair of bench, uh, that in fact, the operational purchase was also carried out last year by Putra. The Audit Board of the Republic of Indonesia mentioned the problem in managing village finance uh, that uh, stem from the lack of knowledge was village official in financial govern governance reporting that there is the potential for fraud or corruption. Indonesian Corruption Watch stated that there are four factors that cause corruption in village funds. First, the lack of community participation in the process of planning and monitoring village funds. Second, the lack of competence held by the chief of village and village official. Third, village institution that have not been have not been fully empowered for the competitive area of village head elections which result in high political costs. Therefore, for the creation of the good financial management, village governments are required to pay attention to the principles as one of the guidelines is accountability. Transparency, participation, and competence factors greatly influence the accountability of village fund allocation of the village government. The competence of a person in terms of government apparatus that is increasingly high can increase accountability as well as community participation has an impact to bring big change because participation is closely related to accountability. Based on the above background, the purpose of this study is to analyze the influence of transparency, participation, and competence on management accountability. Literature review. Agency theory is a concept that explains the contractual relationship between principal and agents. The principals are those who give the mandate to other parties, namely agents, to carry out all activities on behalf one of the principal in their capacity as decision makers by Jens, uh, Jensen and McLean. In local government in Indonesia, agency theory has actually been practiced consciously or unconscious, unconsciously. Hypothesis development. According to Mardia Small, transparency is the opens of the government in providing information related to use management of public resource to those who need information. The government has an obligation to provide financial information and other information that will be used by interested parties in making decision. According to Alida and Aida, stated that public transparency 
transparency influenced the accountability of financial management where transparent financial management can increase effective accountability. The formulation of the first hypothesis is uh, as follow. Uh, transparency influence the accountability of village funds management. Participation according to state administration agency and Indonesian national government international internal auditor or BPKP is that every citizen has a voice in decision making, both directly and through the intermediation of legitimate institution that represent their interests. This participation is built based on freedom in associating and speaking and participating constructively. According to Zane, find that the role of the community to participate in development planning, implementation, control, and supervision can improve government performance effectively, efficiently, transparently, and accountability. The second hypothesis of this study is community participation influence the accountability of village fund management. Competence is an ability to carry out or do a job or task based on skill and knowledge and supported by the work attitude demand by the job uh, by Winarsi and Christianti. According to Winarsi and Christianti, competent as an ability and characteristic possess by a civil country village apparatus in the form of knowledge, skill, and behavior attitudes required in carrying out its duties and position so that the civil country village apparatus can carry out their duties professionally, effectively, and efficiently. The state that human resource competency is one of the factors that influence accountability village fund management. The third hypothesis of the study is competence of village fund managers influence the accountability of village funds management. Methodology. This was a quantitative study, several villages located in Bengkalis and Kampargen, Syria mm -hmm. province were taken as the location of the study. Chief of villager, village, secretaries, treasurer, village consultative agency, and local community were part of the respondent. The data were collected through questionnaire, interview, and documentation with the total sample of 128 respondents. The sample was selected using the purposive sampling method with the criteria of the sub-district and the village still in the category of coastal village and obtaining the largest share of village finance. The data was uh, classified into primary by Creswell and Piano. Result from the tables, uh, the result of the hypothesis testing indicates that all independent variables have positive and significant influence on the dependence variable. Transparency. Uh, participation and competence influence the accountability of village fund management. The result of this study clearly so that is in good financial management must meet the element of transparency, including informative, openness, and disclosure, so that the principle of the transparency is able to maintain public trust in the government in accountable village fund management. This research has also reflected the implementation of the principle of transparency, namely the village government is able to disclose material things to the community so that it allow the public to gain access to the widest possible information. Community participation influences the accountability of village fund management. The village has been able to properly participate in financial management with the community so as to encourage increased accountability in village fund management. Participation in financial management will encourage positive relation between the community and the government. This is because participation will make the government interact with the community more often 
a community participation can be one factor that can increase accountability in village fund management. Competent influence the accountability of village fund management. A village official have the expertise and knowledge in managing village finance. The village fund management process will achieve accountability. Therefore, the better the competence of human resources in firm of village fund management, it will increase the accountability of village fund management. Good stay work can be realized if the servant has competence. This show that the competence of the accepting apparatus is good so that it can increase accountability in village fund management. In conducting financial management, human resources who are competent in their field are needed. Accountability becomes a complete apparatus control over everything that has been done in a government. So that the role of government as an agent becomes an important factor in accountability for the performance of government to the principle of the people. Conclusion. Transparency influence the accountability of village money management. Transparency carried out by village has been classified as very good. Uh, the village has been able to provide open information about financial information and policies taken by the government. Transparency ensure access for everyone of the public in the obtaining such as information so that transparency can increase accountability in financial management. Participation influence as the accountability of village fund management, increasing community participation in village fund management will increase village accountability in managing funds. Competence influence the accountability of village fund management. Village officials have the expertise and knowledge in managing village finance. The village fund management process will achieve accountability. Suggestion. The village government should pay more attention to this factor so that the accountability of village fund management increases and continues to improve the in the future. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Mrs. Uh, Enisa Vitri. So now we are going to the question and answer session. So please welcome for the question. Okay, no question? Okay, Bu Eni. Yes. Uh, is it reset to uh, to see the transparency, right? Yes, uh, it says reset uh, to, to manage uh, financial uh, apa? Uh, village fund management or Indonesia dana desa. Mm, yes. Uh. So this, I think, so many problem regarding uh, the uh, village fund, right? Yes, so many problem. So what what the problem? Uh, the problem about the transparency, uh, competence, and uh, uh, reporting uh, to uh, government uh, about. Uh, is it no socialization before uh, the project? Um, uh, okay. Or maybe we call it this uh, training for the guideline, guideline how to to spend the money, how to uh, responsible. Um. To manage the secretary treasurer mm. to uh, secretary uh, to manage how to reporting um, to reporting a village fund management uh, according uh, transparency principle uh, and effectiveness. Mm. So many the village uh, leader, village leaders, uh, meet to the uh, Indonesian Corruption uh, Committee, Indonesian Corruption uh, Institution, eh? 
Like KPK, like this? Uh, it's 2 billion, right? Yes. Per village, per village, per year. Uh, the villager, the villager, to, uh, the head of villager, uh, don't know to use, to use and to, to allocate the village fund management uh, according the role of uh, uh, the act, uh, the act of the undang undang according to the law. Law, yeah. Regulation. Uh, regulation. Mm, so many the uh, village leader come to jail. Eh? If no transparency and no responsibility. Uh, uh, the, the head of villagers uh, uh, doesn't know to reporting, just uh, maybe to reporting, to the reporting, the use of uh, allocated village funds uh, in this, uh, in their village uh, to governments and uh, they are, uh, they, uh, they don't know uh, how to reporting, how to mm. up, uh, manage uh, uh, because uh, uh, knowledge, yeah, uh, mm. their knowledge <laughs> is uh, what we call kurang memahami what we call eh? So maybe so so um I need a, a training yeah a technical training maybe yeah how to spend the money yes okay uh, any other question please no question anymore so if no question we give the applause to the uh, Mr. Any Safitri thank, uh, thank you very much yeah thank you very much. Now we are going to the Mr. Ilham Ziaul Haq. No Ilham, eh? Muhammad. Oh, Muhammad. What is Muhammad? Muhammad. Oh, Muhammad Agung Pribadi. Yes, sir. So, so please, uh, Muhammad Agung Pribadi. Uh, as usual, your time is ten minutes for the presentation and five minutes. For question and answer, so please. Okay. Very few minutes. Okay. Good afternoon, all. I want to introduce myself. My name is Muhammad Abu Pribadi, as a student of Civil Engineering Department, University of Riau, Kanbaru. And the second author or corresponding author is Doctor Engineering Sigisutigno as a civil engineering department and center of disaster of study, University of Rio. And next, uh, next author is Associate Professor Kuichi Yamamoto from Yamaguchi University, Japan. Okay, my 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 paper title is Gone Water Flow Analysis at Coastal Pitland Area and using for this velocimeter or PDP. Pit distribution in Indonesia. Exactly, tropical peatlands cover an area around 40 million hectares and half of uh, this pit is we can found in Indonesia, around 20 million hectares. Pit is the essentially result of accumulation of material left over from vegetation over a thousand years ago, consisting of around 50% carbon elements. So the Indonesian peatland are very important and have to reserve for global climate control. The largest peatland is located in Sumatra Island, around 6.4 million hectares, with the larger this largest distribution on east coast of Sumatra Island, recording around 60% peatland in Sumatra, around 3.8 million hectares is located in Rio province. And Bengkalis Island is the second largest peatland in Rio province, which is around 89% uh, in Bengkalis Island is consisting of peatland. 
it was estimated the peatland volume in Kalis Island is to be the range of 3.228 until 3.58 kilometers cubic. The Bengkalis Island is the one island which uh, very few vulnerable of coastal abrasion problem, problems. Abrasion rate in Bengkalis Island is very high, reaching around 30 meters over years since uh, 30 years uh, ago. You can see this picture is the uh, abrasion phenomenon of Bengkalis Island. This picture, uh, I take the picture directly in the field. Because of the degradation that happened in uh, pit area in Mangalis Island, uh, so uh, so many uh, problems that happened uh, of uh, this phenomenon, like uh, hydrological cycle change and another. One of the hydrological cycle is groundwater flow. So that's why I should to research this uh, uh, this study to the field, which is uh, uh, this this happened cause of uh, this affected of uh, abrasion phenomenon. This research I using uh, the paper displacement that developed by Professor Kuichi Yamamoto from Yamaguchi University. Uh, this 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 uh, equipment is very simply and economic than the other uh, equipment. The, the background of the de development of paper this type underground water flow meter is uh, if we compare the tracer method, we should measure with multiple observation wells for type and uh, with the groundwater flow velocity measurement, we just uh, using single hole type measured by single observation well. If we compare it to another equipment of groundwater flow, uh, by using conduct, we can see the conductivity method, thermal method, and image method. So, so many plus and minus of this equipment, like expensive, fire required, and long long measurement time. So. Uh, paper this fellows matter so many so many um, in, so, so good for uh, groundwater flow measurement and objectives of, of this uh, research is the study and to analyze of characteristic of the pattern uh, groundwater flow directions as an analysis of the rate of drainage on the pitland using PDV in coastal pit areas that experience the phenomenon of coastal abrasion and the study focuses on mapping the pattern of groundwater flow directions using PDP and observing those affected by phenomenon of coastal abrasion. And methodology of the research, the first is location and research point and next to equipment what we use to this research and going to methods uh, and, and the last is image processing. The location of uh, research is in the west north of Bengkalis Island. Uh, there is a 14 deep point of uh, deep wells that we use for, for analyze uh, water content of uh, pit area and for groundwater flow measurement. The first is we should drilling the pit and measuring uh, each we each each meter of uh, we drilled, and after we use uh, after we drill the pitland areas, so we should install installation the deep wells uh, like this. <coughs> uh, uh, the installation equipment, uh, like uh, the pipe, we should make a hole each uh, each uh, each a pipe so. The water, the water level can to can into the pipe as as uh, make a sensor. And this the result after we we measure in the field. 
The first is uh, we should uh, measure the groundwater level, groundwater level each of the wells to make uh, to mapping the contour of uh, groundwater surface. And next, we measuring the groundwater flow using PDP, and this the result of uh, velocity of groundwater flow. After that, we should we make sure the paper is dry, and we we process in the laboratory using scanner. The after we scan the paper and we input to image J and running by macro processing of image J, and we can get the dot and tailing uh, distance. <coughs> After that, we process the data until we get the directions and the groundwater flow each uh, each uh, each paper. Uh, for this, I take the example like this. We can see the direction around 144.46 degrees and the velocity around 0 0.057 meter per day. Because of so many data that we get from uh, the field, uh, uh, and I, 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 I go to the field around three times, uh, exactly in September 2019, November 2019, and January 2020. So so many data that that we get from the field. So. To make a conclusion, we should make a requirements for the choice directions and velocity. The first is groundwater flow rates the limit around more than 0 0.01 centimeter per minute. And the second, use the largest values each, uh, each measurement. And the third is prioritize to paper on the middle side because uh, in the middle side, much more stable than the other side. And, and pay attention of the direction flow towards the contour of the water surface. If only one measurement that we meet in the requ requirement one and two, then we can use that value. And next, calculate the resultant of direction and velocity of the water flow at the same depth with different measurement times. This one, I took the Three-meter measurement on on September 2019 at N2W two two point, and the first direction is to 249.9, and the second direction is 185. We can see the figure like this. The direction is uh, a degrees from the north. Uh, so we should make sure the in the field where's the north uh, direction. After that, we can using the uh, resultant vector, and we can get around zero point two eight eight meter per day, and the direction around two hundred and eighteen. 0.65 degrees from the north. And this is the field measurement. The field measurement, I use uh, groundwater surface from mean sea level. And then we make a contour like this. After that, we should make, uh, we should make pattern for the direction of and velocity uh, of uh, groundwater flow. And make sure each point of where we measurement in the field. In this case, we, uh, we as a researcher, we just use two point for uh, uh, velocity, velocity meter. And this in November result, also same with the September result, but the, the values of Groundwater surface is decreased.
and this is the November result. So we can see the direction of of groundwater flow in zero in 5.5 meter. The direction of groundwater flow go to the sea. If uh, if we make a bigger picture, we can see it is the sea, and so in the 5.5 meter. Uh, the direction of groundwater flow go to the sea. And this is the January summer result. The the groundwater surface decreased than the November result. And this is the January result. Uh, and we can see in this area, we exactly in the field we couldn't found the deep wells but and we can see in <coughs> n3w3 and n3w2 point in january already get a uh, crack uh, in the in the cause of abrasion we can see in this deep wells already in the already in a coastal line so yeah abrasion is so dangerous for a long-term case. And the conclusion of the research, this research used PDP to study the groundwater flow on the pit coast of, of Bengkalis Island. This research found that the groundwater slope dropped significantly near the coastal line on the groundwater level map on 12 January 2020. This made the groundwater Groundwater discharge to coastal area become higher than may cause a failure on the coastal cliff. The failure was identified as the initial phenomenon of the abrasion mechanism in Bengkalis Coast. This research also found that in the measurement on 6 September 2019 indicated the highest velocity both at N2W2 and N2C deep wells with the velocity magnitude of 1.1 meter per day and 2.31 meter per day respectively. This occurred because of the dry season condition that caused uh, the level of drainability was very high. In the rainy season, the level of drainability was lower than in the dry season because of because the pitland was on the wet condition along the season. And acknowledgement, the authors would like thanks to ADB and AXI project for student research grants program and JSPS, DG, RE, RSTHE joined the research project for supporting the research activities. And that's all, thank you. Okay, thank you for the pre presentation. Now we are going to the question and answers. So please welcome. If any question to the Mr. Muhammad Agung Pribadi. So please. Any question, please. So, uh, Mr. Agung, groundwater water flow analysis, eh? yeah. um, coastal pitland area Bengkalis Island, yes. using paper dish. What different paper dish than other methods? Um, we can see in this, this slide. If we can see in conductivity method, we can see this principal advantage and disadvantage. The most of this, the most of this uh, method, like thermal method, image method, the lower we should spend much more money for this mm -hmm. equipment and we should much more energy for require of this equipment and also we should need much more long time measurement time so if we compare <coughs> to pdv uh so much more better uh, much better for the other equipment like simply so simply installing in the field and so cheap yeah 
That's so up so after the research what we uh, recommend what we are recommendation for the future to the uh, uh, flow eh? coastal peak land area in Megalish island hopefully for this research uh, we can we can much more develop this this equipment of course because uh, me actually directly so so the the this equipment how made it and and actually i also directly go to the field and how how groundwater flow just go to the sea uh, like canal like canal we can see canal just flowing to the sea in it it will make the it dry in the long term so many cases that will happen after mm. this hydrological change uh, phenomenon mm. so we need to uh, to Much block research. to to block maybe the water the water come in come out uh, to the sea eh? yeah Okay, any other question, please? If no question, we give the applause to Muhammad uh, Agung Pribadi, and we are going to the next uh, papers. Okay. Thank you very much, Muhammad Agung Pribadi. So now, uh, maybe I'm presentation, eh? presentation to my paper. So, uh, Okay, we can see this. Okay, uh, I directly need to present uh, upgrading characteristics of empty fruit bunch, uh, bio pellet with addition of bintaro fruit esco firing. So this uh, our research. And next, uh, so backgrounds. So if the uh, year on the year the energy consumption more much uh, consuming by the peoples because the people uh, actually uh, increase uh, every day so we need energy yeah. now our energy the big the most of our energy coming from the non-renewable fossil fuel so we need to uh, to challenge uh, to to look as a resource uh, and we have the so many abundant resource on the renewable fuel uh, such as the empty fruit bunch or we call this a tankos in rio province and then we we need to uh, to look the environmental pollution potential so what potential of the uh, pollution so if tankos and existing tankos is it existing empty free bonds now this only for this uh, bond and if we burn the tankos so they uh, produce the uh, smoke and this not better for our hill so we need to how to uh, change from musibah uh, from disaster to uh, benefit how to make the money from the waste this the the point of this uh, research so the problem uh empty free problem is the calorie is low so we need to upgrade the calorie and this meet to the uh, standard of the uh, biomass uh, fuel so this energy consumption so in this study state that in indonesian uh, 70 deaths occurred due to mercury and silica exposures by uh, PLTU uh, activities. Uh. So 
this problem with using the call so we will uh, change uh, the call to the bio call by from the empty free bunch this this the biomass we will uh, convert to fuel so the problem biomass convert to fuel is the the high color the, the calorie is low so need to add something and this we call this a co-firing we need to add something and we blend and uh, make the pellet from this this empty free bunch fibers we have uh, around uh, 200 uh, palm oil mill in rio province and 40 percent of the total cpo it is convinced consists of the empty free bunch or uh, 12 percent from the uh, the fruit consists of the empty free bunch now this product we will make from the empty free bunch and this calorie equal to the uh, coal Ah, be, uh, due to the caloric, the low calorie of the empty free bunch, we need to uh, add uh, some co-firing. So this we are using the bintaro fruit. Bintaro fruit, we uh, process solid waste, biodiesel. The 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 kick here we produce to biodiesel and the kernels, cake and fibers can process to. Uh, Uh, bio pellets so this process biomass densification bio pellets and this system we call the torrefaction torrefaction consists of uh, densification the interpretation is the uh, sequencing process so biomass we need to dry first and we uh, heat and after that we uh, carbonize and after that, we densification and we produce the bio pellet. And this process, we use the operational condition, uh, temperatures uh, 275 degrees Celsius, and time we are uh, zoom 60 minutes, according to the reset uh, previously. And this the feed, any volatiles, and any uh, torrefied empty free bonds. After that, we are densification by the uh, compressor. We are compressed. So this and this uh, ballot quality standards. So bio pellet wood industry. It is the contents. Maximum tens for moisture content, as contents, volatile content, and so on. Bio pellet, bio pellet free biomass. This is the uh, standard of the ISO uh, 17. Two to five. Uh, this is the our recent design. It is uh, a torrefaction machine, and this nitrogen to carry out the uh, volatile gas produced from the uh, torrefaction unit. And this the scheme of the uh, torrefaction machine, and this uh, densification to pressing uh, to pressing the uh, empty free bun to make the uh, bio pellet from this the process condition fit size uh, the long around 15 uh, millimeter temperature uh, to 75 degree uh, resident time uh, 30 45 and 60 minutes a uh, flow rate of nitrogen uh, 50 uh, ml per minute and densification process uh, particle size 20 mesh ratio empty free bun and bintaro 70 and 30 compaction pressure uh, 30 40 and 50 bar and bio pellet size uh, diameter 9 mm and length uh, more than uh, 5 millimeter uh, according the ISO as 17225 uh, this is the block diagram Raw materials, torrefaction process, uh, machine calculates, result of transfer process, and sizing, crushing and grinding, mixing by the uh, 
uh, uh, bintaro fridge densification process we are pressure pressure by the uh, pressure machine and then we are analyze the correctly of the uh, biopellet products in terms of the um, water content moisture content calorie value uh, as content and uh, so on according the uh, ISO ISO standard uh, this uh, correctly of raw materials moisture content TKS EMT free bunch tanan kosong sawit or the English uh, empty fruit bunch bintaro fruits after the results we uh, find out the effect uh, detection time to the uh, water contents during the time 30 minutes the water content uh, 6 point uh, 30 45 minutes water content 4.5 60 minutes uh, 3 uh, point zero the water content so from the graph we can see more the time the water content decrease until three uh, percent in this uh, bio pilot empty free bunch any only bio pilots any this is the the reference by the iso eh? so we uh, result uh, meet to the iso standard so no problem about this uh, water content and this as content we see this more the time as content increase from the 5.5 6.8 7.9 so it mean if the as content increase it mean will decrease the calories so we need the as content low to make the high, highest uh, calorie so this is uh, our challenge how to reduce the as content this uh, biopolyton cost is as content uh, 13.62 biopolyton bintaro 5.6 iso 5 so this uh, still up than uh, iso uh, 17.25 it is volatile content also volatile content increasing the time the volatile content decrease from the 11 11.11 10.553 8.70 949 and so on so if the this low than previously it mean the calorie of the uh, biopel that we produce will be uh, low so we need how to to maintain the volatile uh, still uh, high to make the uh, calorie highs. Fixed carbon is the same. If we have the fixed carbon, by the time fixed carbon increase from if the fixed carbon highest is high as well so we need fixed carbon high and low uh, as content low water content so the standard we have the uh, up then uh, point 13 the heating value increase but not so high but increase from the 4.2 and 4.4.7 density this problem if density uh, increase it mean our calorie is uh, declined so we need to decline the density okay compress it porosity this as well if we have the much uh, porosity it mean our uh, bio pellet uh, not good because uh, if the uh, the biggest porosity it will faster to burn your 
will also not keep uh, long and this not good for the fuel uh, as a feeding the boiler. So the conclusion, FA of the patient detention time in line to increasing the proximate characteristic. So increase the time, increasing also the uh, characteristic of this uh, bio pellets, but inclined to decline, in line to decline water contents and volatile content. Increasing as content, fixed carbon and chloric value of bio pellets. So increasing as content will be decline of the uh, caloric value. And if a pressure uh, in line, if a bintaro fluid is cool, could be increasing character of pellet. If we put the bintaro fluid, the calorie will be increased until uh, 5,000 uh, kilocalorie per kilogram. kilogram. So the biopellet product meet to ISO uh, 17225 uh, lies uh, exception as content. Jadi kecuali exception as content. So this our presentation. So please uh, welcome if any need to uh, we uh, discussion about this. Sorry, any question? No question? No, sir. So, any paper not presented, presented yet? Yes, uh, I want to uh, ask a question. Oh, yes. Please, uh, welcome. Uh, I want to ask uh, first. What is uh, novelty in this research? And two, what implication from this research uh, uh, to benefit of humanity? Okay. First, uh, novelty of the research. Yes. We uh, find out the um, uh, co co firing co firing, and we now the empty free bunch uh, having the low calorie. So not meet if we buy to the market a Japan Japan market example we need uh, they need the highest uh, calorie because there's uh, we need to how to uh, make the bio pellet equal to the coal. Okay. So we have abundant uh, empty free bonds in Rio, but not uh, to use for the uh, fuel biomass fuel. So this for the novel design, and the second, we need to uh, to to make money from the waste. <laughs> so we have the uh, two hundred uh, uh, unit, two hundred the mill uh, pump oil mill in Rio province, okay. and two hundred more maybe two hundred register of the uh, industrial ministry but maybe more than 200 pump oil mill and uh, this so many so many uh, 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 our uh, natural resource so if we can make the money from this so we we can change from the uh, musibah to berkah yeah, <laughs> making money yes. thank you okay welcome any question more? No. If, if we have all presented invite to the present, so maybe we can uh, close the our our, uh, our our class our our room. Any question? No, Lord, no. Okay. Uh, if no question. So I will uh, very thankful to all the researchers already present in this uh, conference. So I take apologies if any some uh, miswork during the moderate of this uh, discussion. So thank you very much to all. Have uh, safe at home 
and see you in the next uh, conference. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and bye. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye.